The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. Apparently, thieves in California stole over $9,000 worth of spam, alcohol, and instant coffee. The thieves are described as armed, dangerous, and recently divorced. A group of metal detector enthusiasts in North Carolina recently helped a woman find her wedding ring after she lost it in the sand on a beach. And that will be the last time a metal detector enthusiast ever sees a wedding ring. I did just move into a new apartment. It's pretty nice. Came with a free wind chime. I call it a wind chime. It's actually a dumpster full of empty bottles and a homeless person. My girlfriend is not just my girlfriend anymore. She is now also my landlord. Which is great, because you get to pay my rent using my bedroom abilities. <laughs> Plus the exact amount of money I owe in rent. Showtime! Ah. I hear you. There you go. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the 93X half Ass Morning Show. Good morning to you. Yeah, man. Right back at you Thursday morning. We're not going to make a big deal out of it. Not going to make a big deal. Because he doesn't like big deals to be made about him. <laughs> no, he does not. Doesn't like big deals to be made. Uh, but uh, by damn, if it's not my best bro in the whole world's birthday today, happy birthday to old Cubby over there. He's 49 years old today. I appreciate that. Thank you for remembering. Even though, uh, despite what I do for what's a meager, barely a living... Right. <laughs> I, you're right. I'm not super comfortable with the tension or want to focus on me, which I actually talk about a lot of my podcast, all about me. Let's talk more about me. <laughs> Josh's world. <laughs> so He doesn't like attention. You truth. can hear all about it on his podcast. Yeah, all about me. Let's talk more about me. Uh, so as much as I had hoped, everyone forgot, and it started good because uh, Dana and Ashley didn't say anything. So I thought, okay. I saw those guys. Maybe they did forget. <laughs> I, had, I had a feeling you'd remember, Nick. But I walked into a, um, plenty of nice messages people have been sending. So here's the deal. I wish you forgot, but I do really appreciate the nice words. Listeners, text Josh with a happy birthday message or you're out of the brother sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, Ashley, Wapple. Dana, Ashley, and Wapple. You would not be working here if it wasn't for Josh. <laughs> you wouldn't. You better say something. You better do something. But Josh, my, you're the best. I, <laughs> I mean, my birthday gift to Josh is not making a big deal about his birthday. That was nice. It's not the best birthday gift I got today. Yeah. <laughs> What's I, that? What's the best one? A uh, buddy of mine yesterday said, you know, I wish tomorrow you have a, a nice bowel movement. And you know what? It started out that way. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I'm That's sorry awesome. to put that image in your head, but I just wanted to say that was incredible that he made that happen for I'm me. I'm so happy for you. I got an email from uh, uh, Linux Jesus that I wanted to read you guys because I thought this was very funny. Linux, you Linux, say? Linux, yeah. Okay. It's an operating system. Is that what For they people do? that really know, like computers, right? I've heard that's the folks that know a lot about computers. So he says, happy birthday to you. Reminder, 49 is 31 in hexadecimal. So be sure you tell your coworkers when they ask how old you are. Tell them that. And when they ask what you mean, start to explain. And then stop yourself and say, look, who am I talking to? And give up. <laughs> <laughs> when they protest, say, bah. And similarly, dismiss them with a wave of your arrogant hand. Also, when someone screws up today on something that has zero effect on you, exclaim, oh, great. Now my birthday's ruined. <laughs> 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 Lastly, please remember you're a, a nice person. Thank you for saying that uh, from Linux Jesus. Yeah, he had a, a very funny email to start the day. I kept up. You know, we're not going to get crazy here. Um, matter of fact, I kept my tradition going of getting you nothing on your birthday. <laughs> As I'd prefer it. Just to show you that I'm not going to try to make a, a scene. But I'm telling you this, and I, I think I already told you this a couple days ago, didn't I, Josh? We're cutting loose in a year's time. We're doing something special, and you're going to have no say in it. We're going to blow the doors off of Summers when you turn 50 years old. Yep, you and have to. And there is going to be, there's going to be, to use one of your own terms, fly honeys. 
you know, I, from one end of that party to the other. When we were talking about this yesterday, I don't know fly honeys anymore. I know fly honeys. <laughs> Have you guys had a situation, or maybe not a situation, but this going on, when, when you had someone in your life, a special someone, you you know, and relationships didn't last super long, you know, a few months at a time, maybe, maybe even a little, little longer, but there's sure. someone that you thought I could call that's on deck. If things don't work out, there's somebody waiting in the wings that I know I could call. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, For yeah. sure. And they know they would know that about me. But that has disappeared after being married 16 years. I don't... I mean, maybe six months into my marriage, there was somebody I thought, well, if she breaks up with me in the first six months here... You know, which, Ashley, that's about twice as long as you were married in the first six months. <laughs> there was somebody I could call. That's but a I, damn I, shame. But, you know, it can happen very quickly, Josh. Very quickly. Does everyone here have someone in the batter's box? Yeah. You, no. you still do? Someone you think you could call pretty easily? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's there's definitely people I would call. I don't know if I would want to. I'd have to be pretty pretty desperate oh, to make I, that I, phone call. I, I but... want to. <laughs> I have a few in mind, Josh, and I want to. I want to call them. Yeah, I don't have one. A buddy of mine, we were talking about this not too long ago. He was saying, you know, he doesn't have one. I'm like, he remembers who it was. I'm like, I, there's nobody. I, it, it's only natural for a guy like you. You weren't exactly, yeah. you weren't exactly Rob Lowe going into the situation. No, nah, I mean, I did right before I met my wife. I, I slutted it up more than I ever had. But um, yeah, I don't. You didn't really have an interest in that. Bing, Bing, Bing. I'm doing this one. I'm doing that one. I'm doing the other one. Lifestyle from the get go. But it would happen for you very quickly. Oh, I don't think so yes, at all. Oh, it, it would. Would I? Trust me. No. <laughs> Trust me. Well, yeah, I'm mean? not. I'm not being humble, or I'm just saying. Cause I, he humble. No, honestly, I, I don't think so. What do you mean? You you don't think that oh, I any wouldn't. women would have an interest in you? No, and I I don't blame them. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm so set in my ways. And b- before I would at least fake it. Would you like to go downtown? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I true. I love that. They call me downtown Josh. Yeah, <laughs> let's get some drinks. Let's have some. F- you want to go to this play? Are you kidding me? I've been wanting to go to this play since they announced it. <laughs> would you like to stay up uh, past seven o'clock on a Friday night? I've never gone to bed that early in my entire life. What are you talking about? I. Hope I, that I won't one fake day, any of that anymore. Uh, I dig your wife, don't get me wrong. But maybe one day I can prove this to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with how quickly and easily it would happen. It doesn't matter if you don't have those five, six gals as, how did you call it, like an on deck? Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. You had your call. You could call uh, in a desperate situation. A guy like you could start from scratch and have it happen very quickly. Well, it's nice of you to say. I, I don't see it the same way. And I wouldn't wish that upon anyone, uh, honestly. It's like the uh, the frog in boiling water, right? They, they talk about how you put a frog in, in water, you start to turn it up little by little. They don't realize it until they're dead. Oh, yep. God, and, I've, I've never really uh, heard that story. Oh, you've never heard that before? No, no but I want to see it happen now. So I think that's kind of how it's been with my wife, unfortunately for her, where she's little bits, little bits, where I like to do less and less and less and less, and she's just been okay with it this whole time. You're saying you're killing your wife like <laughs> boiling water kills Slowly. a frog? Yeah, I am. Slowly <laughs> killing her? At least so, dead inside. So if it was a new woman, she'd be jumping into this boiling water, realize right away, what am I doing? This sucks. I can't do this. And she'd bounce right out. But luckily, my wife has been brainwashed for 16 years. All right, so we're not going <laughs> to... And if she's listening, I love you very much. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not seeing enough birthday text messages here yet. Oh, Listeners, there's a ton. This is more maybe... than a guy could ever want. So we're not going to get uh, mental today, but in a year's time, you're going to have no say in it. And we're going to get you... What's the term that Bass Slayer Jesus just used uh, here in the text? We're going to get you some birthday strange <laughs> in a year's time. It, it's kind of funny. You know, uh, we've known each other for how effing long now, Cubby? Uh, closing in Close, on 30, 30 years. 30 right? years. And uh, uh, the gal down the hallway uh, who runs our promotions department. Ryder? Ryder. Ryder emailed me five, six days ago. And said, hey, uh, when is Josh's birthday? I'm thinking about getting him something or another. And I wrote back, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's right around this time of year every year. And she, I think she was quite amused with that. But <laughs> that's kind of a dude thing, you know, uh, it, we don't really, dudes really don't get dialed into that. Oh, you yeah. Know, each other's put- birthdays. Uh, 
I put it in my calendar. Yeah, if it wasn't in my calendar, I mm-hmm. probably would have forgotten. Okay, I don't have a calendar. But uh, I was actually just scrolling through some article about dudes versus chicks and how we operate. And one of them, one of the little notes that fell under the dudes category was, you can know a guy for years, years, and you don't know what he does for a living. You right. don't know his birthday. You don't know his favorite. Not you don't know nothing. You just That's know crazy that to this, me. Is true. A, <laughs> this is your bro, and you yeah. like hanging that. Dude, that there's describes one of them to a T. There's friends you know where you're not even sure their kids' names. Yes. You yep. know, like about <laughs> yep. about how old they are. Maybe you know how many they have. Right. What? Yep. Yeah. I'll, go, I'll get together, like go out of town to visit, like a good buddy from high school, and like my my, my mom will ask, you know, because she knows the kid. So, uh, you know, how are the kids? I don't know. We didn't talk about it. it. Didn't come up. How's his wife doing? I don't know. How's, yeah, how's the job doing? Is he still at the same place? I don't know. Check his Facebook. Sure. I don't know. No, that's you know that's funny you say that because my wife will ask, "Oh boy, how, you know what'd you guys talk about?" And yeah. I don't remember. Right. And there was one guy. So I, I'm like, "Oh, you know, it was cool seeing. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Um, a very good friend of mine. He just we hadn't talked in I don't know six seven months. And uh, she, she's like, you know, how'd it go? So it was great. It was fun catching up. And she's like, anything big? I'm like, nah, same old, same old. And I realized later in the afternoon, I'm like, oh yeah, he had quadruple bypass surgery. <laughs> In the half an hour from when we went to lunch and I came home, I forgot. <laughs> Completely forgot. He was almost dead on a, a table somewhere in a hospital. He was in the hospital for three weeks. He tells me about this. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I called you and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't get a hold of you when, to tell you. And I completely forgot. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Yeah. That, that, that's just how we're wired. No, Man, and I know he'd be the same way. Yeah. Men, all, men have a lot of service level friendships. Like what, is, what does that mean? They don't feel the need to get to get too personal or learn no. anything about their life as long as they can like drink a beer with them. Yeah, yeah as long as we're and not a argue. Good time. Yeah, that's that's crazy to me. I don't because like from my point of view, the girls that I have in my life that like I know like that, I wouldn't consider them like good friends. Or maybe pardon, even pardon me, like say that again. Friends, the girls that I have in my life it, where, currently in your life. Where like our friendships are like how you guys have been describing, I wouldn't even I wouldn't consider them good friends. Oh, if if you, let's see if I can piece this together. If you treated your girlfriends the way guys treat their guy friends, you wouldn't consider them friends. Good friends, yeah. I mean, maybe like acquaintances, somebody I I just know, but. The people that I consider friends, like I know everything you about them. You need to know all their personal stuff, their families, their occupations, their well, what are some of the things that people know about each other? See, typical dude. <laughs> yeah, what, so, what are other? What are things that you need to know about a, a lady? Well, maybe uh, how they feel about like I do have yeah. their feelings with you your said friends. That. Unless you know, some people are ultra in your face political, but your friends oh, that aren't. Do you have worst. any idea how they feel that way, or do you care? Uh, I don't. Right. I don't. Yeah. I not at all. I might think, oh, I bet they go yeah. one way or the other, but I yes. have no idea. Unless we don't talk they about are, it unless they talk about it, openly talk about it, which always sucks. Their political views. I have no idea. You're you're exactly right. Yeah. I, I don't know unless they come right out and say it. I swear to God, yep. this is a true story. I had a friend who was a senator, and I had no idea for which party. <laughs> People would ask me, <laughs> which party? I don't know. I didn't even know until he left. That was the first time I ever, I didn't care. I never asked. We never talked about politics. Nothing like I'll that. I'll say it again. We're just big, dumb animals. We're easy to please. We don't need too much information. We don't need to share feelings. So, it's, it's a very simple, on the cert, like you said, surface friends are good enough for us, Ashley. Um, Go ahead, Well, So last night, me and my girlfriend were on the couch, and every single night she gets like two to three phone calls. She's on the phone with her friends or her mom for about maybe an hour, hour and a half. And yesterday she just looked over at me and she's like, I don't think I've ever seen your phone ring. <laughs> like, do your friends ever call you? Do your parents call you? And I'm like, no, not really. Yeah, Ash- Ashley, like, what is it that you need to know about a girlfriend in order to, uh, the word I'm looking for, in order to uh, assume her or consider, that's the word, in order to consider a girlfriend, a close girlfriend, what do you need to know? Um, I guess it's not need to know, but I mean, it's just come naturally with like people that I have as, that are good friends. Like that we, we talk about our jobs. We talk about Boyfriends, the people at our jobs, husbands. boyfriends, family, what's going on 
right with on. your brother's girlfriend, stuff okay. like that. Yeah. It just comes natural. Yeah. Okay. Do, so does this happen to you guys too? Ashley, obviously, from what you said, it wouldn't. But a friend of mine said something nice to me yesterday, and then he bombed me with text being incredibly mean and said, I'm sorry, I'm no. not good sharing feelings. He just said all <laughs> kinds of terrible things afterwards oh my to try and make up for the one nice thing he said on uh. the phone. <laughs> and, and That's I wonderful. Lo- I absolutely love that. A few of them stung, I'll be honest, because I agreed with the criticisms. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, it went on for a little bit, and he said, you know, like I said, he wrapped it up with, I'm sorry, I'm not very good with real emotions. Yeah, it's just a, that's just how we're uh, set up. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the nice texts. I really appreciate it. Honestly. I hear you. They better be good to Cubby. No, they are. Thank they you. better be. Do you have anything fun planned tonight? Like a fun, a fun dinner of your choosing? He doesn't I- know. I don't. I don't. He doesn't think know so. and he doesn't care. Right. <laughs> my uh, my wife's like, "Do you have any ideas?" I said, "Not really. It doesn't <laughs> no. really matter." So maybe we'll hit up uh, Noodles and Company. Ooh, oh, that's a good. They, they give out uh, birthday treats. I'm pretty sure. So. <laughs> I'm not going to be the guy that's going to tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a free raised crispy bar. Or something. Uh, you know, I'm almost fifty. I don't know that I should be asking for a free dessert. Can I have a treat? <laughs> <laughs> well, we started the show with some moving clips. Because, Dana, you're moving in officially with your girlfriend today? Yeah, the movers come in a few hours uh, to the old uh, tiny, crappy bachelor pad that uh, my divorce apartment that I'm now saying goodbye to. So, and she will be your landlord? She will, yeah. She owns her house. Just like in Wapple Wapple. situation? Mm -hmm. Two guys on the show whose girlfriends are also their landlord. Any advice, Wapple? Say yes. (laughs) <laughs> Say yes. Clean. Doesn't matter. <laughs> say, yes. say yes. Clean. <laughs> say yes to what? Just say yes. In, anything. To anything. anything. Yeah. Oh, you, say yes. What Another if she one. says, uh, "All right, uh, how about a little Friday night pegging?" Do you oh, still yeah, say, you yes? say yes? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's the rules. Yep. <laughs> you two are another. You, you guys are those kind of guys, huh? What well, that are into Friday night pegging? <laughs> yes. well, really, the, any s- night, I'd imagine. <laughs> you're the you're the yes dear types, aren't you? Uh, uh, not really, no. Not, not too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do I do clean the house more than she does, I think. Yeah, you're a clean individual. Yeah, I do a lot of cleaning. <sighs> you're moving in when? Today. Why well, on a Wednesday, out of curiosity? It's, yeah. her, it's her spring break, so it helps that she'll have the day free to... Oh, won't she on Friday, though? But yet it's you're not a yes two. dear guy. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Well, well no, because it's, she can do most of the work now because it's she has the day off. She's, yeah, not, she's not going to do most Well, of the you work. got an excuse. You don't have the day off. Uh-huh. So she could do all the work if you really want. Well, I thought you had movers coming. Yeah, movers are doing it, but she's got to be there in my apartment to uh, help me in and all that kind of stuff. And stand there awkwardly. Yeah, oh, I, I hate know. that part. I'm so happy I'm missing out on that part of the process. Uh, in this new place that you're moving into. Yeah. Well, it's not a new place. It's her place mm-hmm. that you're moving. I'm, are you guys going to like party and stuff? Oh, dude, let's <laughs> party. Probably. Hey, are you going to do what Ashley did and have a uh, housewarming party but not invite me and Nick? <laughs> <laughs> or I didn't just, invite anybody. Oh, she didn't invite anybody from the station? <laughs> no, because I, I didn't invite anybody that I didn't think was going to come. So <laughs> Many years I ago. Came. <laughs> I, honestly, I would have been there for you. Oh, for sure. really? Yeah. I, w- I guess I w- it probably would have been weird because like only like four people ended up showing up. And my parents were only there for like a couple hours. And if you want to have hit like that, that nice gap where like my parents were there and the friends weren't there yet, it probably would have been uncomfortable. By the way, Dana, you should mention Ashley that you had a housewarming party. Yeah. Remember, we, yeah. we talked about it. she didn't invite anybody here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you should clarify, Dana, that you're dating a teacher. Yeah. Uh, yeah people I, are a little I, concerned just, that your, oh, your fiance is on spring break. Oh, my, no. my, my fiance is a second grade teacher. She's not uh, a co ed. That's hers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're coming up on 40 here, mm-hmm. so people were a little concerned. Right. Are you dating yeah. a high school girl? No, I'm yeah, not. No, she's she's very much my age. Oh, that would have been <laughs> That's awful. hilarious, though. <laughs> Many years ago when I moved, boy, a long time ago, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, I'll tell you this. The last moving company that I hired, which was, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, man, they were almost, more than almost, they were fun to watch. These guys were just slick and fast and organized and just really good at what they did. In every aspect, they 
They knew how to take apart a pinball machine in five seconds in order to move that from one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It oh, wasn't yeah. just the ability to stack boxes like you're playing Tetris. These guys knew how to do everything. Light fixtures. It was just crazy. But 20 years ago, I didn't quite have the uh, funds to pay for a top-notch moving company. I just hired the first three schmucks that I found in the newspaper. Yeah, it's not cheap, is it? No. No. And it showed. I mean, (laughs) they were friendly guys, but I don't think a one of them was older than 20 years old. Once they had everything loaded up, I followed the giant moving truck to my next destination. And at one point, I watched them lose almost complete control of the truck as oh, it's no. going oh. down. I mean, just whip it, whip. There's, mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. One of them dropped the joint in their lap or something, but suddenly the moving truck with all of my belongings in it is swerving violently <laughs> on 94, and I'm behind them going, what the hell is going? We get to my new place, we get moved in, and as the dust has settled, one of these 20-year-old kids is on my driveway sitting on the last box that's to be moved into my new residence and he's just kind of sitting there and he's like so this is like your place now huh (laughs) and i said yeah and you live like he was similar to wapple and ashley a lot of likes when he was making his statements and he says so like like so um in this new place now bro like you live alone and i said yeah and he said oh dude so like now that you're here and you're like alone are you gonna like party (laughs) (laughs) you're gonna you're gonna have like a lot of parties and stuff Uh. and i said Yes, I will. <laughs> Thanks, gentlemen. Have a good day. I had a guy at Jersey Mike's ask me that once. You going to party this weekend? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and of course, I thought, is he making fun of me? Do I look like the type of guy that's yeah. not going to party? I'm like, no, no. I'm, he's like, really? Not, nothing planned? I'm like, no, it's going to be the perfect he's, weekend. He's I, making your sandwich, and he looks yeah. up at you and says... You gonna party this gonna weekend? Party this weekend? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And I was like, this is how I know we've never met. Uh. Yeah. No, I'm not. But you're right though. Watching movers or people that are really good at their job. We talked about hygienists and dentists when they're doing a procedure, you know, the ballet of excellence. Right, right. Where they're so good at what they do. That's fun. I almost creepily like to watch that kind of thing. Like the forklift well, we drivers. Well, we know, hell, a couple days ago yeah. you said you go on ride-alongs <laughs> with electricians. Yeah. 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 You like, you go, like go to watch on another the... ride-along this Friday, by the way. With, be... with who? Uh, Minneapolis police. Oh, a cop. A yeah. cop. Oh, okay. I thought it was an electrician or a, a, a carpenter. Okay, I'm sorry. You were mo- watching movers. Yeah, like the uh, the guys that work down the, bu- the building, at the end of our building, I should say. The guys that are out there loading and unloading stuff with forklifts, oh, watching them sure. cruise around. Yes, That's yes. a lot of fun. Right here. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I love watching watching that the people that are really good at their jobs we know that that's we know why that. i want to sit in a k-fan one of these days <laughs> it'd be nice to know kind of how it's done how it's done how a professional yeah. radio show gets put together that's great that the kid asked you are you going to party this weekend and you said what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean i was laughing i'm was like what do you mean by that you, you know? should have said hey bill did ted take the day off <laughs> you know were you did you feel pressure to party that weekend then no but you know what so that's the first time i ever went there right uh-huh. and which started something for me and uh, i thought wow that's cool he really took an interest in my life until I realized, oh, they're they're that friendly with everybody. That's, oh, that's kind that's of not fair. That's you, you part of what they do. You come in next time and he asked the guy in front of you if he was going to party that weekend. You're like, oh, I thought that was our thing. <laughs> I was kind of like uh, uh, you, the, uh, somebody who goes to a strip club for the first time that might not be aware the girls are going to hit on you and show interest in you. I was just like that with the guy at Jersey Mike's. Uh-huh. Where I thought, should I give him my number? Yeah. Like maybe oh, we could up. hang out or something sure. like that. Is that like an invite? <laughs> you I'll didn't know. If you're going to party. <laughs> He didn't quite know how it works at the Boom Boom the first time. He yeah, thought, same my, type of thing. My God, she <laughs> she's in love with me. I'm killing it. Why yeah, am I yeah. so good here? Ah, <laughs> oh, wow. So it's Josh's birthday. 
We'll have to bring it up again later. If no, you, no, 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 we're no. good. You got it out. But, thank but, you to everybody that texted in. This is very nice. I, I understand that you don't like him. We're not, I don't think we're, are we making a big deal? We're not making a big deal, are no. we? Okay. We're going to have to mention something to Randy Shaver and Jungle Jane. No, I, I was actually stressed about it, to be honest. Stressed about <laughs> what? Yeah, I you had were, a work dream that, that you made a big deal out of it with Shaver. Because, you know, like Marcus is going to be at Felino for the Wild. He's going to be on stuff. I, I, don't, I don't want that pressure. Don't, don't put that smoke on me. I, I, this I, is good. This is all I need. Okay. Want that smoke. <laughs> Fine. If, if you really don't want me to mention it for the rest of the day, I won't. I'd rather have you not. Explain to me what, what pressure is there? I don't know. I just uh, can't handle Are this. Are you out of your freaking mind? I worry I'll feel stupid when I talk up, you know, say the, thank you or something. Is this the first time you've ever had a birthday? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I have one every year. Um, it's always you, the same day. It's the same day every year on the calendar. And uh, I get, yeah, there's, You can be why. truly fascinating at times. Look, can you guys see the <laughs> way I'm... Now are you starting to realize why no other woman would want me? You're starting to get it? <laughs> well, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah. The pressure <laughs> of having a birthday and having Randy Shaver, Janelle Klein, and uh, Phil, uh, Phil Lodeholt. Uh, what the, the, <laughs> what's the guy's name? Marcus, That's Marcus, Marcus Lodeholt. The pressure of them being involved in that conversation, that's pressure. Yes. <laughs> and I, like I said, I'm not even joking. Last night I thought, God, I hope everyone forgets. Okay. <laughs> I won't say a friggin' word. <laughs> Good Poor guy. Lord. Uh, you know, there's a few Catholics texting in that understand. Thank you for understanding. Someone said something earlier. Uh, we got to take a break, so maybe I shouldn't bring anything new up, but... I think Dana might have said, uh, I'm trying not to ruin Josh's birthday by not mentioning it. You know, mm-hmm. that's the overall vibe. Josh does not want us to go any further with this as far as celebrating or recognizing his birthday. Has any, well, and This is open to anyone, of course. So just mark this down, Josh. We're not directly talking about your birthday. We're just talking about birthdays in general. Has anyone ever, ever had a birthday ruined by something? <gasps> Yeah, when I was younger, I got oh, grounded. What? Yeah, I got grounded like a day before my birthday. I can't remember what I was doing, but I remember every year because it pops up on like my Facebook memories and it'll be like 10 years ago. And it's a, or no, now it's more like 14, 15 years ago. And it's an angry Facebook status that's like, F you, mom and dad, you ruined my birthday. You, what is, you said F you, mom and dad on yeah. Facebook? Yeah, Jeez. but they weren't, we were not. Like the only people I had on my Facebook were what like did you other do? fellow what happened? young people. I have no idea. You don't. I, what do you mean you have no idea? I recall them taking my phone and You're telling. You're only 26 years old. How do you not remember? <laughs> I don't. I smoked a lot of weed, but they. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember them taking my phone and me not being allowed to go anywhere. But I can't remember what I did. Well, I probably got caught with something like. You really don't remember. Or you just don't want to say. No, I absolutely have no clue. I got in trouble a lot. Oh well, yeah, we all got in trouble a lot. I mean, but uh, I think it's crazy how you can remember that kind of stuff. That's like so pushed to like the back of my back of my memory. Well, I thought of one. It didn't really ruin my birthday, but just something that stands out on a birthday. This this was well, I tell you, ten years ago um, on this day, and uh, I noticed in my kitchen. Like the ceiling looked kind of goofy. It was like drooping almost. And so I got on a step ladder, and uh, okay, a bigger ladder. And I, I walked up there and I kind of pushed on it. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Just oh. Like, what's going on? And like a, a giant zit, my oh. entire ceiling exploded. I looked like the, I looked like the world's worst bukkake movie afterwards. <laughs> oh. Apparently, I had a leak in the bathroom, and it just went absolutely everywhere. Oh. Just exploded. This was on your birthday 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife came downstairs, and she's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Double F. Yeah, the we, ceiling just exploded oh, on oh, me. Man, it was <laughs> just a swimming pool in there. I ruined my own birthday once um, by getting involved in a fist fight. Oh. My, my last real all-out fist fight was on my 33rd birthday. That was stupid. It was really, really stupid. <laughs> Me and a friend paired off with two guys in a bar parking lot and had a friggin' brawl on my 33rd birthday. I woke up. To, I mean, we were very drunk. It was really dumb. You know, one of the guys on the other side of the fight said he had a gun. I mean, it really, it, it was bad. It really could have turned out horrible, you know. I woke up in the morning, my right 
thumb was the size of your mother's ass cheeks. <laughs> and I'm laying next to my girlfriend at the time. And I'll never forget the look she gave me when she realized I was conscious again. She just looked at me as if she was saying, you are such a friggin' stupid loser. Oh no, is she disgusted? For a, a couple hours that morning, she was pretty mad about it. You know, I was too drunk to recognize how mad she was about it on the night of. But yeah, yeah the next day she said, you know, what was that? And I mean, at the time I thought, 33, I'm way too old to be doing this. So now, you, now I look back and say 33 is still pretty young, but it was just really dumb. So I, I guess I'd say I ruined my own birthday. Uh, well, I, so I was going to ask a question, but I think you just answered it. I was going to ask if your, bro- your twin brother, so obviously having a birthday, I assume maybe you guys were together, and I was wondering if he was still drinking, which would mean he was still fighting. He was not there, and he was done drinking at that point. Yeah, So I, because I, shoot, I knew you at 33 for a while, actually, and so... He's never been drinking since I've known you. He's been dry for, I think, since we were 23 or 24 years old. So he was not there. He was not involved. And it wasn't uh, as if the fight was my fault. I ruined my own birthday for getting involved. Mm. The two guys that we fought in the parking lot had it coming. They did. But I, 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 that's why I say I ruined my own birthday. I should have never engaged. I should have just said, forget it got in the car and got out of there but it the fact that i got involved in that fist fight is what ruined my birthday for me i feel the same about dana's fiance she should have never engaged i don't know what she was thinking <laughs> she'll regret it eventually oh she probably already does yeah uh one more note before we go to break josh dolph lundgren is officially an american citizen how cool is that? And I'll be honest, I assumed he already was. So did I, but I want to be the first to say that he's a true benefit to this country. Mm-hmm. Dolph is. Lundgren, after being in the country for 40 years, has just become an American citizen. And he's one of the all-time greatest Americans, wouldn't you say, at this yes. point? Yeah. Now, now we've got a chance to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine like, any country that had any uh, ill intent towards us? They found this out about Dolph Lundgren. They're like, you know what? F it. Yeah. No. it. Yeah, we're, we're not taking on Drago. What yeah. are you, are you guys nuts? You're going to mess with that guy? <laughs> All right, here we go. Thanks again for the text. Thank you very much. Well, you deserve every word of it. We got to get going again. We'll take a break. Uh, I, I think I mentioned that uh, Janelle Klein's going to be here later. Am I, oh, and uh, Mikey uh, Felino from the, uh, the Timberwolves or whatever. Uh, Marcus Felino from the Wild. See, I'm thinking so much about Josh's birthday. I don't know who is who and, and what team they play for. Yeah, I've never heard you mess up a name. No, you're right. It's, I'm, I, it's, it's a rarity. We'll be right back on the Half-Ass Morning Show. Half-Ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the Just Capital seal. Bank of America is ranked number one for ongoing commitment to their workers with initiatives like Sharing Success, which awarded 97% of their teammates additional compensation, nearly all in stock. This is the program's seventh consecutive year, awarding more than $4.8 billion in total. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, we're going to get there. The stupid news, we're going to get there in just a minute. But we've been talking about birthdays. No reason. (laughs) Everyone has them. We got on the topic of birthdays ruined. Have you ever had one of your birthdays ruined? Whether it was your doing or somebody else's. Here's some text messages I received from the brother slash sisterhood. Here's a listener who says, I destroyed my own 21st birthday. And that's a keeper. Mm-hmm. That is a keeper when you turn 21 skis. Dude says, I lost my ID 
a couple weeks before I turned 21. Oh, no. So that I sucks. couldn't get into any bars. That sucks. Couldn't get that cheap thrill of going to the liquor store legal for the first time. Mm-hmm. Had to have someone else buy all my hooch. It totally sucked. My new ID came in the mail three days later. Oh, it would have that been more suck. of a kick in the nuts if it was the next day. <laughs> That's such a big birthday, too. Oh, yeah, man. That, you couldn't go out to the bars. You couldn't do just sitting in the house waiting for your bros to go buy you some beer. Uh, two jobs, one income, Jesus texted in on the topic of ruined birthdays. When he was nine, his ninth birthday... He and his whole family went to Applebee's. That oh, sounds yeah. great. I love that joint. When we were uh, getting ready to leave, I told my grandma, he says. I told my grandma I had to go to the bathroom. I went to the john. I came out. Everyone had left. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I spent the next 35 minutes sitting in Applebee's eating vanilla ice cream and calling my house phone until someone from my family answered, remembered, and came back to get me. Uh, it's like a sitcom. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> He's got some vanilla ice cream. <laughs> yeah, the Applebee's employees were like, what? They, they really left? They'll sit here. We'll get you some ice cream. Get you <laughs> home at Sunday. 35 minutes later, he's still calling. Is anyone home going to come get me? All right, here's another ruined birthday. Well... I don't consider this ruined. A listener says, I rented a hotel for my 19th birthday to have a threesome with one hot chick and one not chick. <laughs> the hot chick backed out, so I had a regretful sleepover, he says, with the not chick. Better than nothing. It's all good. You take yeah. what you can get and you make the most of it. No regrets. That's a good life lesson. Right. Don't, don't feel bad about that. It happens. Uh, big rig fenders, Jesus. He says, I had one of those birthdays when I was 10 where I invited a bunch of friends and nobody showed uh, up. That is hilarious. That oh, I hate that. Oh, yeah. uh, it's awesome. If you have time, Ashley might know where I'm going with this because we're both big Cheers fans. I still watch Cheers every night if I, if I can. There's a great scene from years ago where Cliff Clavin explains that when he was a little boy one of his birthday parties no one showed up and his mother hired a clown <laughs> to be the yeah. entertainer for all the children but no one showed up and it was two hours of just cliff and the clown going back and forth <laughs> if the i don't know if you can find that on youtube but that was one of the greatest scenes in in the history of cliff clavin's character was him explaining the give and take between he and a clown all by himself because his mother was too uh, cheap to just send the clown home. Yep. She paid for the yeah, clown. The uh -huh. clown's gonna... One uh. more. One more uh, ruined birthday. A listener says, I found out my woman was whoring herself out for pills on my birthday. Oh. Happy birthday Dude. to you. That's what kind so, of pills? Yeah. <laughs> he, didn't say, he didn't get into specifics about the pills. He didn't. Does she still have that hookup? That's good stuff. All right. On with the stupid news. Oh, this is kind of relationshipy here, right? Because um, we just closed out with the talk of a, a girlfriend going wrong on you. The owner of a restaurant in a town called Melbourne, Australia, he has achieved... A lifelong dream of mine, he has. He went viral. The ultimate goal for everybody, right? Someday you yep. will. To go viral. I mean, just imagine going viral. You'd be mentioned in the same breath as great moments in history, like the Cinnamon Challenge <laughs> or Gangnam Style, if you go viral. I have seen the Cinnamon Challenge in person, and I must admit it's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen that? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. I've done it. It hurts. It does not end well. Now, it wasn't being filmed, but they just tried it. If you oh, go they could have gone viral, though, if they would have filmed it, Josh. I want to go. You're on the same level as dabbing if you go viral, and that's... It ain't just me. Like I said, it's an ultimate goal for everybody. Maybe one day. Planking? Right. Oh, yeah. T-Boeing. Maybe one day oh, I'll have all the eighth graders. Oh, if anybody dares mention Harambe, I will physically attack you. Oh, D's out for Harambe. <laughs> I will. 
All right, again, the owner of a restaurant in Melbourne, Effin, Australia. He went viral, all because of a sign he posted up out front. The joint, a brand new joint, and hasn't even opened yet. He calls the place Chingu Korean Barbecue, don't you know? The owner posted up a sign out front that says, Hey, Sophia, you broke up with me because I was poor. Now I have money to open a Korean barbecue. Are you regretting it now? (laughs) Dude. I'm going to guess she's not. (laughs) Get over it. And You're embarrassing yourself. Wouldn't that kind of turn you off from going to that restaurant? Yeah. Yes, it I'm would. I'm not supporting that's the that guy. guy. That runs that? He's that petty? That is really, really stupid. Says here that the locals in the neighborhood were dying to know the backstory behind this bit, but others in mm-hmm. town others in town said it's just maybe just a clever marketing trick. Social media dorks got involved. One person said, I don't think Sophia will be able to see that sign from her new boyfriend's yacht. (laughs) It's kind of a sad some bitch here. The guy running this Korean barbecue there in Melbourne, Australia. Putting up something like that. Knowing that, you know, soon enough everyone's going to be coming into the joint and he wants everyone to see the... You got to get over it. You got to move on. Maybe some of you remember this here. Back in the year 20, add... 22, a newspaper ad from Somewheres uh, went viral. It doesn't matter the newspaper, but a woman named Jenny called out her cheating ex with a full-page ad in this newspaper. Now again, the whole thing might have been some bit to get people to click on this or that. You never know these days, but the gal took out a full-page ad in her town's newspaper that said, Dear Steve, I hope you're happy with her. Now the whole town will know what a filthy cheater you are from Jenny. P.S. I bought this ad using your credit card. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Again, with the social media dorks, some of them supported Jenny when this happened uh, three, four years ago. One person commented by saying, Jenny sounds like someone I want to be friends with. Another used this tired ass line. Not all heroes wear capes. (laughs) So there you go with that. Three, four years ago, who who reads the paper? (laughs) (laughs) All right, you know what? You have a very good point. What the hell is the paper? Yeah, I don't know. I think... uh... I, it's not right she got cheated on. That's too bad. Oh. You know, it's too bad he couldn't just break off the relationship and not do that to her. But, <laughs> you know, sometimes even if you're 100% right and people understand, ah, that's too bad that happened, you can make yourself, you're the douchebag yep. when you do yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. The best, she should have started dating somebody that had a yacht or something like that. I'll tell you what, I think you're right, Cubby. All right, this... uh this next story, just here and where it came from. This pleases me, Cubby. This pleases I me. I like it when you're happy. Yeah, thank you. Utah. We don't get a chance to find out what's going on in Utah very often. We don't get to hear from them in our stupid news reports. Uh, some effing, so that, I'm, I'm happy for that. Some effing guy in Utah. He got himself arrested over the weekend for sticking flashing red and blue lights up on the top of his work truck so he could make his way through a traffic jam. You see how how you are? Yep. That's cute. That's better than the dude that wants to pull people over. Mm-hmm. And oh, absolutely. A cop. Absolutely. Still stupid, of course, but I think yeah, much we, better. It's, that's a different style of douchebag. Yes, it, it absolutely very different than the uh, the sleazy character with the fake cop outfit that's pulling women over just so he can look down their shirt or something. Yep. Uh, but this is, you know, get out of the way, he says. He's stuck flashing lights up on the lid of his work truck so he could snake his way through a traffic jam. Now, where the dude went wrong 
is that he pulled this gimmick while he was allegedly drunk off his ass, all effed up on drugs, and he also had a pile of damn drugs in the vehicle. Oh, mm. darn. <laughs> when you have that combination, it's best to draw as much attention to yourself as possible. <laughs> yeah, right, you know, like people talk about, uh, oh, I called attention to myself because my license plate light wasn't functioning, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Instead of doing your best <laughs> to make sure everybody can see what's going on. 47-year-old guy this was. They tossed him into jail. They also got him for impersonating a police officer. And it's funny. You know, this dildo would have likely been busted all on his own, but other drivers called the cops when they saw that dumbass had the spinning lights on the lid of his truck, but the damn vehicle also had a construction company logo on the side. <laughs> the construction police? Who does this guy think he is, right? When the cops asked the dude about the drugs they found in a bag in the cab of the pickup, the man said they were, quote, amphetamines that he used to stay awake. I think he skipped a couple three syllables in that word, didn't he? Amphetamines? Yeah, he skipped metha. Oh, sure. Because he did test positive for meth rocks and weed when he took a piss. Mm. <laughs> Not surprising. Now, uh, you druggies over in the other studio, do you mix your drugs up? Like, I know you guys have tried some harder stuff. Do you mix it with weed? Is it like what? some people mix drinking and weed? I mean, the Weed would always be um, what would happen at the end. Mm -hmm. okay. I always, Josh, I always went uppers, weed, liquor, cocaine, downers, meth, crack. That's how my <laughs> Whoa, always that's a crazy that, night. That was a regular recipe that I stuck with for five, six years. Mm, hey, you're you. ending with too many uppers. I went up, uh, way up, down, sideways, up, down, 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 up, up. It's like a code when you play those videos. <laughs> Contra. That's how I did it, man. Yeah, I was just curious how that uh, worked. I One day I went meth, downers, uppers, coke, booze, weed, downers, weed, coke. Didn't Ooh. end well. Didn't end well. <laughs> so I, I... I always did it to kind of level myself off again. Like if you were going too too far one way, you're like, oh, this is getting intense. Then smoke some weed and kind of brings you back down. Yeah, exactly. So it is common. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. Yeah. I just go idea. down, for me, I, I don't use drugs, but I go down the nutrition pyramid. Uh, I go supplements, nutrient timing, micronutrients, macronutrients, and then energy balance at the very end. Just to kind of, <laughs> That's good regimen It's like you a got. glue. It's like a compression. Like, yeah. It glues yeah. everything together. Yep. It's always good to mix drugs. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first, yeah. kids. <laughs> Back to this dude. Like Josh said, there was no evidence... That showed that Dinkus here was trying to pull folks over in his make-believe cop truck. He was just trying to get through traffic faster. He had to go. Maybe he had a meth rocks-induced code brown. A regular code brown is difficult enough. Now imagine that turd is on meth. Ooh. I the, wonder if I could hold in a meth turd. <laughs> this is great. Uh, this text says, meth plus weed equals speeding with the brakes on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what are the uh, side effects of meth? I mean, aside from the, the terrible ones you hear about. Jesus. Besides awesomeness? Does it, does it I don't mess know. with your tummy like that? I have no idea. Oh. I just know that uh, we don't usually read too many positive stories about it, do we? <laughs> no. I can't imagine getting involved in such stuff. What does this next story say? Oh. A guy in New Jersey chose an interesting weapon to use while he was attacking someone for no good reason. And, and again, I love this. Utah, New Jersey, I just get excited when I'm not trying to piece together a story from Biafra. You know what I mean? This is great. A guy in New Jersey chose an interesting weapon to use while he was attacking someone for no good reason. I, I think I know what this is, but I can't be sure. This nut job by the name of Cameron Cole. He reportedly, reportedly isn't the word, he repeatedly smacked someone upside the face, breast, chest, neck, and head 
with what they call here in the story a USB flash drive. Isn't that just a <laughs> tiny little thing? Yeah, yeah usually. those are small. What usually is, they are. Can you show me a picture of a... Is, uh, isn't it just a tiny little something or another? Maybe yeah. he had it on a like inches? a lanyard. It, it can be uh, like, you know, the, the USB stick. Like that. Well, how do you hit someone with that? You stabbed him. I was wondering if he had it on a lanyard or something. He you said that twice now. You yeah. said something about a lanyard. Whipping it around, you know. Mm. Or what are those things like you put around your neck? It's kind of like a strap. Maybe he had one of those oh, on there. Like and a lanyard. Him. Yeah, <laughs> lanyard. Yeah, yeah could have had that. <laughs> ah, you know, Wapple, you can, you Wapple get... if you say it the first time and no one reacts, just say it again. That's what I did. Right. Yeah. That you get your damn point across. I can't stand wait. up for yourself once in a while. I'm, I'm trying. Next I, time, just say, "Hey, I said lanyard over here." <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the state fair when we can get 93x lanyards. Me too. I don't even know what he's talking about. 93x lanyards. Yeah, we have those. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you mean? What do they say on it? 93x. <laughs> what, well, Sometimes what you, they'll add rocks on yeah. there. Why would you wear that around? No, maybe, maybe you put a, your keys on there. Maybe you got a flash drive you want to hit someone oh, with. Oh, uh, um, first full, oh, okay. full circle. The, the, I thought the lanyard was the piece of plastic. The the lanyard is the thing that hangs around your neck. Yeah. 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 Oh, for Christ's sake. All right. Good thing you went with that yeah. lanyard deal. Good thing well, I kept saying lanyard. Yeah, I mean, it went on for a really long it time. Did. I understand. I understand now. Okay. All right. Now it's I like can... It's like a nunchuck now. Now I can see how you could... It's like a nunchuck now. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it louder the second time. <laughs> now I understand why someone, how someone could deliver a beating with a lanyard connected to a USB flash drive. This Cole fella, he's a, he's a young fella of only 25 years old, and he's obviously insane. He was charged with second-degree aggravated assault. He got hauled off to the hospital to get his head checked before he was taken to jail. The victim had lacerations all up and down, but he was all right. More confused than anything, I would imagine. Did you just hit me with a flash drive? <laughs> yeah, he's thinking, I just got my ass kicked by the geek squad. You know what I'm saying? I'll bet there was some weird stuff on that flash drive, too. I'd want to oh, know. Yeah. Oh, oh sure. yeah. Lanyard. Oh, None boy. Chuck. You got to be careful with this kind of thing. Be careful with this. A dog digging around in its own backyard the other day upped and dug up a damned uh, unexploded military weapon. That's what they call it here in the article. I know that sounds dumb, but I don't know any better term for it. And you couldn't... Huh? What? what the hell was that? Go ahead. That was the guy I was going to talk about. Oh, God. I didn't know you were going to repeat it. <laughs> that no, that, that sounded like someone was being hurt. Uh, <laughs> this is the guy talking? Yeah. Okay. You couldn't really tell what it was until you started to pull it up. And then once I got it like halfway out, I was like, oh, I know what this is. Let me just gently put this back down. That's the guy. His name is Matthew Simsky. Matthew Simsky. To me, it looked like a grenade that you might fire smooth out a grenade launcher, but I don't follow such things. Look big, kind of big for that. Is it too big for that? That's, at least in the picture I saw. This is uh, this was in Florida, don't you know? Matthew Simsky. Uh, he owns the dog. He owns the property. The dog's name is Baby. Cute. So uh, he's in his backyard playing with Baby. He noticed the dog had dug up a rusted object. He pulled it up out the ground, quickly realized it was something that could possibly blow his arms off for him. And then he dumped that comment like you heard there in the audio. I got it halfway out. I was like, oh, God, I know what this is. Let me put this back down. He said it was about a foot long, weighed about 10 pounds. The damn thing had been buried there for some time, they say. A bomb squad swung by the house. They had to evacuate some folks from the neighborhood. The bomb squad snatched it up, and they left with it. Baby the dog was put down later that afternoon. They had to put the dog down. No. I, I no. read the story, and I don't remember that in there at all. <laughs> that, would, that, that would be so unnecessary. Yeah, it was, Ashley. But <laughs> they had to do what they had to do. The guy was just world. waiting for an excuse. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's not always fair. <laughs> You know, a lot of the stories that you you tell, the dog gets put down when it wasn't actually in the story. It, 
It's a common theme. All right, fine. That was a special birthday surprise for you. (laughs) Happy birthday, Josh. The dog didn't really get put down. Baby is fine. Ah, Can't have any fun around here anymore. Everyone everyone gets bummed out about... All right. Dead dogs. (laughs) Dead dogs. So sensitive. They used to be fun uh, on this show years ago. We used to do a lot of dead dog humor. Now everyone just just clams up and just, ooh, they're all quiet. Just that people aren't the way they... Things have changed. Now, I can't quite remember... How uh, long ago it was that Josh and I signed up to get finger banged by way of one of those colonoscopies? We each went ahead with it. What was that, a year ago? I don't know. We, we talked quite a bit about the process. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, two years ago for me. More or less, we were trying to get everybody to feel better about the process, which really isn't as bad as you might imagine. Not at all. So if, in fact, you didn't hear our pep talks in the past, I'll say it again. Don't be afraid when your doctor says it's time to go back door on you. It's quick, it's painless, and it's the best orgasm I've ever had. (laughs) (laughs) Now, as far as what your doctor finds up there, that's anybody's guess. And don't come crying to us, you know, because we encourage you to get a colon and then they find a a class ring or something. You don't come crying. that's, That's anybody's guess. That's your problem. Bugs, even. Oh. You've heard folks say, boy, do they got a bug up their ass. In some cases, it's a legit statement. Believe it or not, fully intact insects have been found in separate poop shoots during colonoscopy is- exams. Huh? Yeah, ain't that something? Ooh. When I have my next one, I'm going to ask the doctor if he's ever pulled a bug out of something like that. Yeah, you ought And to. I wonder how they... If that freaks them out, mm-hmm. or if they, you know, they're a doctor and they're used to seeing next to everything. Oh. Got another bug. Oh, here's another guy that oh. had an orgasm. Gross. <laughs> Isn't that something? Fully intact insects have been found. Let me tell you about it. Here are the seven full-on insect breeds found during colonoscopies. Number, uh, how do you call it, seven? A fly. Hmm. Flies love poop. They do. So why not just cut straight to the source? That was one happy fly for a brief period of time, don't you think? <laughs> I wouldn't want to know. Wap, I'll ask him if, say, don't you think? Repeat, don't, repeat it mm-hmm, for yeah. because no one answered. Don't you think? Right. Lanyard. Lanyard. Brett Favre. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to know. Would you guys want to know? I wouldn't want to know. No. no. I wouldn't want to know what? If the nope. doctor pulled a bug out oh, of Oh, I'd want to know. That's, that's very interesting. No, absolutely I, not. Why would you not want to know? All right, that would disturb me. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't I, sleep for a while. I was shocked when you said that number seven on the list. Yeah. I thought the list would be like one or two insects. No, no, I said There's it. There's a lot. I, I thought I mentioned that there were seven full-on insects. That's Maybe insane. I, number I six. Like two. An ant. Well, it kind of makes sense. That yeah. guy had an ant in his colon. <laughs> ants kind in his of pants. How does it make sense oh. that a guy would... Ants in his pants. Oh, you <laughs> dickhead. Uh, I, I love would, you for I, that. I would guess that the little ant might have been, uh, you know, sitting on a chicken wing at a picnic a couple days earlier, right? And the guy, dev- he didn't know he was eating a... Sure. Yeah. But the insect was fully intact, so I don't know. You'd think if an ant was on your sandwich and you ate this, that you would chew it up. I don't know. The thing was in perfect condition. It's a whole army of ants, and they're all going, hup, hup, hup. When they're walking in. Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> Lanyard. Uh, number five, a cockroach. Whoa. Mm, I, Whoa. Have that. I have questions about that one. I think though. you would feel that. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Unless it... Ba- baby you, cockroach. You would think you would feel it. They get to a decent size. It's not like yeah, an ant. I'm picturing, yeah, I'm picturing like a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing about those cockroaches. They can sweat out a nuclear uh, holocaust. So, they so could be it's, in your... it's probably not too shocking that a cockroach made it at least for a little while surrounded by diarrhea and stomach acid. They're tough. Number four, the harmless ladybug. Ugh, oh. Stupid ladybug. In your bottom. Oh, no. The, you know, this, uh, this must have happened after you cleaned everything out, right? Because the process, if, assuming you did it right, the process before colonoscopy oh, yeah. takes I didn't even think of that. everything out of you. 
As a matter of fact, if there's anything left in in there, they send you home, and you got to do it all over again. That is something <laughs> I did not consider, but you're right. Unless they just hold on just with everything they got. Yeah. That's what I was picturing, <laughs> with their little legs just They're clinging on. on. Because, so, right, the night before, you spray everything uncontrollably. To the point where you're laughing. Out <laughs> of your body. Right, okay. Uh, I think it's hilarious that they'll send you home. No, nope, come back next time, pal. <laughs> there are three more... Brands, breeds, whatever the term is, of fully intact insects that have been found. Three more insects that have boogied up into somebody's butt. Number three, a moth. I bet that tickled a little bit. A moth in your butt. <laughs> that tickled. That yeah. was a, that was an itch that the some bitch couldn't scratch. Number two, a bee. What? Somebody swallowed a damn bee. That's hilarious. Maybe one day I'll be lucky enough to watch someone accidentally swallow a bee. And I'd prefer it to be a small child or an elderly person. I think that would <laughs> add to the fun. I've seen dogs eat bees. Oh, plenty of dogs. Which is very entertaining. The look of confusion on a dog's face when the bee stings is a lot of fun. And then what do they do? They go ahead and swallow another one. <laughs> and they still wonder why it hurts so much. No they lesson. don't understand. You've, you guys have seen that. My, my dachshund went out in the yard one day. Hey, look, bees. And he ate one. And it stung the piss out of his tongue and the side of his... Oh. And he swallows it and he thought, oh, hey, another one. Oh. He looked so uncomfortable, but yet he thought, well, okay, maybe there was just one bad bee. I'll, I'll try this other one. Cute. His face swelled up. He looked like Rocky. <laughs> and number one, uh, I, I mean, not that there was a ranking, um, but the final fully intact insect found. Stink bug. During a colonoscopy. <laughs> it was not a stink bug, but that's a good guess. Maybe they all became that. Because <laughs> they <laughs> gather up. They, there's a, I, I, this is, I guess, the best way I can say it. When you have a stink bug problem, it ain't just five or six of them. No. And I had one in my mouth a couple years ago. Oh, I had one. Oh, no. Those dove, are terrifying. Oh. It dove into my mouth while I was having dinner. Oh, oh. did you bite into it? No. Oh, Dude, I hate the I'd looks of done. those things. But I had them, I had the bastard in my mouth. I'm having dinner. I'm windmilling some garbage into my mouth. I look up, and there's a stink bug on the uh, light fixture above the dinner table. And I was so used to living with these damn stink bugs that it didn't bother me. Okay, I, I said to myself, well, I'll, I'll fetch that bastard when I'm done having dinner. And then, you know, he, he, he dive bombs, you know, and I'll uh, right into my mouth. No, dude. I shot him across the room. I would. It would take me a while to recover from that. <laughs> The final insect, fully intact in somebody's bottom. Who's this unlucky bastard? He gutted a wasp. Oh. Oh, my God. They are hardy creatures, aren't they, Josh? Yeah. Insects. They are tough. Yeah, I've had some uh, that have been, we get them every year, that have been very difficult to kill. You spray the stuff on them, they're like, F you, and they keep crawling towards you. Yeah. Uh -huh. They want to get you yeah. right before they pass. Uh-huh. Oh, that's fun to talk about. Look, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Waffle here with your video game update. The biggest anti-Grand Theft Auto activist is now praising video games. Ex-lawyer Jack Thompson tried to sue Rockstar numerous times in the 2000s, as well as developers and publishers of games like Counter-Strike, Doom, and Mortal Kombat. Round one. Fight. All of the attempts were unsuccessful because he could never prove a link between video games and real-life violence. <laughs> After being disbarred as a lawyer in 2008, he still went on his anti-video game crusade, claiming in 2022 that Grand Theft Auto 3 made him sick to his stomach. Ah! Fast forward to 2024, and the man's got a podcast, now claiming that video games are the greatest teaching tool ever invented. Thompson said, quote, You are actively doing something. You aren't passively watching a movie on the couch. You're actively a character in that movie. In other video game news, it looks like microtransactions are here to stay. The two largest video game companies in the United States, Electronic Arts and Take-Two Interactive, now make majority of their money from livestream games, subscriptions, and in-game purchases. 
popular games to use these microtransaction methods are Fortnite, Call of Duty, and Clash Royale, which are all built around this revenue model. Think of this. Just in the last quarter, microtransactions made electronic arts $5.6 billion. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Got him off in the house. I know what bro's trying to do. Came in the old house and he's here thugging it. So I made a little box area where you could just run right outside. I don't want no problems. You can't go this way. All you can do is peacefully run out, bro. So what are we going to do here? Do possums jump? Get out of here, bro. Oh, he's just standing tall. He's not even moving when I hit him with Get the out of here. Come on, bro. What you doing? Like he wants to scrap for real. I'm going to get a golf club and swing on his ass. Try to put a pitching wedge up his paws. Someone said throw water on him. Getting his back legs ready to jump up on me. Look at him. He's mad as a bitch. What we doing, bro? All right, we got the water on. What we doing, homie? All right, here we go. What we doing, bro? Ah, right, there we go. There we go. This way, this way. No, bitch, not that way. Damn it, whoever said water. Now he's on the run. Ain't that a bitch? Come on, now break. Break, break. There we go. He's out of here. Go, bro. Go to freedom. Yeah. Good for you, bro. End it peacefully. Go back to the family. Former NBA player Matt Barnes, for whatever reason, he thought he needed to document an in-house battle he had with an opossum the other night. <laughs> I love that. That and was he's pretty funny. Swinging a golf club at it. I don't know what he's doing. Running water. I didn't see the video, but I read about Matt Barnes versus an opossum. He had to get out the golf. He threatened to get it high. Yep. Did yeah, you read he, that part? Yeah, he was going to see if he could get it to smoke a joint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's one of those guys, Matt Barnes. All he usually likes to talk about is how high he is or how high he was or how high he's going to be or how high he wants to be. Jesus Christ, change the record. <laughs> At least that uh, video had a little bit of originality to oh, it. Oh, yeah, I liked that interaction. It ended well. Possum left. Mm-hmm. All right, got to get the hell out of the way. Uh, But I had a couple things to tell you real quick. We were having a conversation a few minutes ago. There have been people who have volunteered for colonoscopies, right? They go into the doctor's office. They drop their pants and underwear as the doctor goes backyard on them. And there have been a few people where fully intact insects were found in their bottoms. Really an interesting subject that we covered a few minutes ago. Bees, wasps, ants, cockroaches, flies, things like that. Listener texted in and said, I swallowed six yellow jackets accidentally when I slammed the last can of when I slammed the last of my can of Mountain Dew. I swallowed six Whoa. yellow six. jackets. Oh, I, my I mo- ended up in the hospital unable to breathe. Dude. My mom made me terrified of that. Like, ever since I was a little kid, I remember her being like, oh, check check your soda before you drink it if you leave it unattended in the summer. Yep, tap the side of it. Yeah, yep. I've been suspicious a few times. Now, I mentioned that an ant, a fully intact ant, was found in someone's colon. And a few minutes ago, Wapple made a really weak ants in your pants joke. Oh, it was but great. Check this out. I got a, a way better joke. What's worse than ants in your pants? Uncles. Uncles. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, something to watch on television. The Timberwolves get themselves uh, going tonight with a home game against the Detroit Pistons. 7 o'clock on Bally Sports North if you're not going down to the ball game. Uh, what's his name? Marcus Bellino of the Man Bear Pigs is going to join us in a little less than an hour for a Minnesota Wild update. We always look forward to talking to Marcus Jungle Jane's going to visit us in Studio 2 at around 7.30. Stay tuned for Josh's News. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Half-assed morning show. 
93X. I'm glad he's behind bars. I can't believe that somebody has that little to do with their life that they're going to call and harass a small town in the middle of nowhere, Florida. But I'm extremely excited that they were able to find him. A Canadian man was arrested last week after he posed as a student and made a hoax 911 call about an active shooter at a Florida middle school. In February, deputies said they received a report about an active shooter at a middle school, prompting a large response by law enforcement. Audio of the 911 call was released Monday, which shows the caller identified himself as a resident named Nick and claimed he was about to open fire. Can I have your name, please? My name is Nick. I just wanted to let you guys know that I have an AR-15 and that I was about to go into my school right now shoot everyone. I've been just feeling really suicidal lately and people have been bullying me as well at that school. And I'm about to just honestly just shoot some kid right now. I have a gun pointed at one kid already. That incident turned out to be a hoax. Again, he's in a different country. The sheriff's office said there was another false call the next day about a hostage situation, which sparked another response by law enforcement. Deputies learned the man, 20-year-old William Tuckett from Ontario, believed he was in an online relationship with a 13-year-old who attends the school. What? She broke contact. What? So he resorted to making hoax calls until the teen started talking to him again. That was his idea on how to bring that disgusting relationship back together. Well, at least a relationship he thought he had. We got a keeper here, boys. (laughs) Sheriff Billy Wood said in a statement, swatting poses a danger to law enforcement and civilians alike. Those found guilty of perpetrating swatting incidents will face arrest and prosecution to the fullest extent of the law. He's due in court late next month. At first, I was going to assume that this was one of those, uh, you know, 35, 36-year-old some bitches who wax off to their police uh, scanner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But after you mentioned that he believed he was in a relationship with a 13-year-old... Uh, that's a, that, that puts a whole new paint job on things, Josh. And that's how he decided to get that relationship back. We got a whole new ball game, Josh. Yeah. After he told me he thought he, he's a 20-year-old who thought he was in a relationship with a 13-year-old. Right. Whole new ball game. A man is accused of stabbing a family member at a Michigan elementary school Sunday during a fight before an Easter egg hunt because he was pissed over placement of eggs. <laughs> Someone got stabbed? Uh, that's right. A gr- takes... grown person stabbed somebody? Yeah, that's right. Ah. They take Easter egg hunting seriously. I guess so. Uh, the man from Battle Creek was helping to set up Easter eggs when he and a woman got into a disagreement about the placement of those eggs. One of his family members became involved in the argument, during which the man pulled a knife and cut the person oh, multiple times. my God. Deputies arrived to find the 36-year-old suspect still holding the knife, which he ultimately dropped at the urging of law enforcement. Deputies were able to get him to drop the knife. They arrested him without further issue. Meanwhile, medics treated the victim on scene. They will be okay. Apparently, luckily, just minor lacerations. No one else injured during that incident. No children had arrived yet for the event, so at least no kids had to see something like that. <laughs> that's incredible. I love it. I love the passion. The passion? Yeah. Oh, that's a good reference there on Easter. Oh, yeah, I suppose. A man wearing a ghost-faced costume from the movie Scream brutally attacked his neighbor in Carbon County, Pennsylvania. Hello. Hello, Sydney. Armed with a knife and a small battery-powered chainsaw, 30-year-old Zach Moyer is accused of going to his next-door neighbor's house around 3.30 p.m. Monday, dressed in a black cloak costume and mask from the horror movie Scream. Edward Whitehead Jr. was struck multiple times with a knife and a battery-operated chainsaw. At the time of the crime, the suspect was wearing an all-black outfit consisting of a mask of the Scream character. There, he attacked his 59-year-old neighbor, then went back to his home where he lives with his mom Uh, and watched a movie until police arrived. Did did mom get him a movie? Yeah, mom did. She rented him a movie. That's sweet. Frozen pizza or something? Sure. Oh, yeah. Popcorn, um, orange pop. Troopers set up perimeter (laughs) around the home, and Moyer began communicating with him through written notes and a notebook. Some of those notes included Moyer believing the victim had committed crimes. Didn't say what kind. He surrendered a short time later. There was communications going on between him and troopers on scene, and eventually he did open the door himself and exit on his own will. Again, he's writing notes. Are you guys mad? Circle yes or no. WPS right back soon. (laughs) Maybe tonight we can watch a movie. (laughs) He initially told police he had gone to his neighbor's house to scare him, but then admitted he actually went there with the intent to kill him. Why do you have blood all over yourself? Can we just settle in and watch a movie? (laughs) 
Two Virginia sheriff's deputies were injured. Five employees of a tow truck company arrested following a brawl which began over McDonald's french fries. A tow truck driver, upset with his french fry order, got into an argument with staff at a McDonald's Thursday. Then the argument grew when another customer intervened on behalf of the employees. Management asked the tow truck driver and his group of co-workers to leave, but they refused. As the first tow truck driver was being escorted to a patrol car, other drivers surrounded a deputy shouting profanities. The deputy deployed pepper spray, but then another driver threw a deputy to the ground. For his efforts, that driver was tasered and handcuffed. Three other tow truck drivers were also arrested. Well, that's effed up. I mean, I don't know. I, I hate to say it, but I don't know, maybe Wapple, maybe you were right. I mean, you've always said that you have absolutely zero respect at all for tow truck drivers. <laughs> I did. And now here's this story, Josh. This tow truck driver kind of came uncorked, right? He did. Huh. Yeah, he did. I'm not going to fully upset. go. I'm not going to fully go along with what you've always said about tow truck drivers, Wapple. But this definitely makes me. <laughs> it makes me think a little bit. I'm right again, right again. Uh, over the years, Wapple, how many things have you said that you're learning when Nick brings it up? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't wait. Wait, of wait the a time. minute. I don't make this stuff up. I oh, know that. I'm sorry if it made it. I wasn't suggesting. I just said. It seems like he learns these once you bring it up. Yeah, because he no, doesn't. I, he, he says so he's always got his mouth running yeah. off air. He doesn't yeah. remember some of these insults that he always has for hardworking blue collar citizens. That's what it is. I forget right. the day before. You know, I said all that stuff off air. But mm -hmm. yeah, now Nick brings it back up on air. Thankfully, yeah. Thankfully. Well, it's good to be held accountable, Wapple. Mm -hmm. In other McDonald's news, that in kid vernacular may be described as bussin'. The fast food giant announced yesterday they teamed up with Krispy Kreme to sell their fresh donuts daily. Three signature Krispy Kreme donuts will be available individually or in boxes of six, starting at breakfast and lasting throughout the day. Well, that's a match made in heaven yeah. right there, really? isn't yeah, it? That's, yeah. a, that's a big move. McDonald's and the Krispy Kreme people, huh? The new McDonald's and Krispy Kreme partnership is set to roll out starting later this year. Nationwide, it'll be expected uh, by the end of 2026 to get them in all the stores. End, end of 20... How, how long does it take to bring a truck and load of donuts to McDonald's? Uh, they walk them from place to place. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time to wait. Yeah, that it really is. I'll forget about it by then, uh -huh. though, so I'll be well, psyched I'll be, all well, over again. Well, maybe it'll be your favorite one soon enough. Jesus criminy. An Indiana man reportedly fled from several different agencies in his Ford Mustang and then bragged to officers that uh, he reached speeds of 170 miles per hour before being caught. 21-year-old Michael Stincato was arrested following a chase which began with a police officer clocking him at 84 and a 55. This was Saturday afternoon. The officer pursued the white Mustang, but he laid on the gas, flying down several state and county roads at speeds over 100. He nearly lost control several times. He drove recklessly past cars in the breakdown lanes, even driving in oncoming traffic. Attempts to use spike strips failed, but eventually the driver hit a curb, ending the chase. Police reported that the man bragged to one of the officers about hitting 170 miles per hour during the pursuit. He was arrested. What a dumbass. You guys yeah. see how yep. fast I was going? Let me incriminate myself real quick. <laughs> Oh, we only had you at 120. <laughs> <laughs> the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is looking for a man accused of recording women in a Marshall's restroom in mm, Florida. Oh, that's, not, uh, that's, not, uh, oh, that's not legal. He was posted on the department's Instagram last week as part of its series Wanted Wednesday following an incident March 12th. The report accuses the man of recording two victims in the stall next to them. TikTok video showed a picture of what's assumed to be the man's shoes with a cell phone in between them. You guys violated oh, your privacy. Man. You are so sick for that. Don't do land about I want it all. I want it all. Sick. No, 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 you stay no. here. No, no not you stay here. You're not leaving the store. No. I like that these women confronted him. Mm -hmm. How did they yeah. know? How did they know what he was doing? One of the women saw the camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the phone, I guess. They beat his ass. They didn't beat him. Oh. But they, they did with their words, which sometimes is longer lasting. Word beatings. <laughs> in the video, a woman is heard telling the man that he's not supposed to be in the bathroom and to delete the recording. Nobody let this guy out. Delete the recording. You cannot get out. You have recording of us using the recording. You're recording people going to the bathroom. You no, cannot man. leave. No, you need to delete it from 
Come no, on. I want him arrested. Several officers. What was he doing while they were all ganging up on him like that? Just kind of nervously searching for an exit? <laughs> yeah, like, how do I get the heck out of here? Yeah, he was trying to delete the photos. Yeah, well, I'm pretending to. Yeah. 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 Ah, I wish one of them would have just... Okay, I'll delete it. Yep. Here you know. go. I wish they would have maced him right in the <laughs> friggin' yap. Several officers searched the area but were unable to find him. It was 158 years ago on this day in bathroom history, March 27th, 1866. Andrew Rankin received a, pa- a patent for the urinal. Oh. 26 years ago today in 1998, the Food and Drug Administration gave boners to an estimated 23 million men when they approved Viagra. And a couple of big albums were released 40 years ago today in 1984. And to stay with the genital humor, they both dropped D's in the dirt. Rat released their debut out of the cellar. And the Scorpions released their ninth album, Love at First Sting. Oh, for Christ's sake. All on the same day. What a couple of incredible albums. What yeah. a great time to be a 12-year-old, 13-year-old. Yeah, that's good stuff for sure. I love, love both those albums, especially mm-hmm. the Rat album. Mm-hmm. It changed me. <laughs> Birthdays. Former twin Michael Kadire turns 45 today. Ah, what a handsome man. guy. You know. You're a Cuddy fan? Uh, yeah. My uh, friggin' wife. She uh, she blew it. She, she had a chance. Uh, she had a chance. Oh, what? oh man! She Wait lived. a minute. Yeah. She won. She won what? For a second, I thought, wow, she could have been with the twin, but she landed you. Well, she did really yeah. well. There's no qu- I settled. And <laughs> she did really well, but uh, I, you know, back when my wife and I w- were just friends, I kept encouraging her to throw herself at Michael Kadir. And she wouldn't. She wouldn't do it. Well, she they, still- they lived in the same neighborhood and whatnot. And uh, I always told her, I said, you should go over there and bang him. <laughs> she did. But she never did. Yes, Wapple. She did still end up with a twin, though. Hey! 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 You dirty son of a bitch! Yeah, you're on fire! You're on fire! God, I, I kind of get jealous sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, you're former, jealous of that line? That was good. <laughs> uh, former Vikings quarter. I'm going to edit it in the podcast as yeah. if I said that. You record yourself saying it and then have them put it in. Done. Mm-hmm. Already finished. <laughs> former Vikings quarterback Randall Cunningham, 61 oh, today. See, my wife banged him. Did she? Yeah. A lot of wives she banged him. She didn't turn that down. All I, right, I, I, I shoved her towards Randall uh, Cunning- Cunningham or McDaniel? Cunningham. Cunningham, yeah, yeah she banged him. Yeah. Actually, it's a joke. I don't want him showing up. That is a joke. We're joking around. Also, 61 on this day, director Quentin Tarantino. Happy golden birthday to Walter's cart bitch Jesus. Happy birthday to Metal Hand Finishing Jesus and his dog Spike. And happy birthday to a taco Jesus, uh, or a taco Jesus, maybe. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. I love this dude. I mean, this dude is electric. On the half assed morning show. Looks like they're going to call it on Draymond Green. Boy, oh boy, did he grab Patty Mills. Looked like by the throat here. That will be reviewed to see if it's going to be a flagrant foul. Look at this. Dangerous play by Draymond Green, who's already served two different NBA suspensions this year. Five and 12 games. Completely ridiculous. Oh, for Christ's sake, yeah, we'll get to Draymond Green. He he just can't handle it. No, oh, man. Nope. What's going on with it, that? It's too? just too much for him to handle. We'll get into it here in just a minute. We got a hell of a crowd here. Uh, first off, live in studio, Janelle by damn Klein slinging that uh, Norwegian heat. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hi, Janelle. Hi. On the uh, fancy home broadcast uh, microphone, Randy Shaver. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Randy. Morning, man. Nice and to see you, the, Janelle. Uh, there's nice Janelle over you. there. And on the uh, cellular-powered telephone, and it, it must be a fancy one because it picks up every breath he takes. It's Brad Ryder. <laughs> I'm uh, in the office, but hello. Hi, Brad. On the office phone. Hello. Office phone. God dang yep. it. You got, someone needs to give me this information before we go live. Oh, He's on the office oh, phone. Oh, you want that? All right. How's, that, uh, how's everything going over there at work, Brad? Good. I thought you were on spring break or something. That was last. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Son of a bitch. Time flies. How did? Well, we never we never asked you how your spring break was. Did you get your hair braided? Did you get a tattoo? <laughs> did you meet? Uh, a, did you meet a girl at uh, Senior <laughs> Frogs? Let's see. No, no, and no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Senior Frogs. <laughs> did you? You and your buddies just got wasted. <laughs> Yeah, no. Did you uh, ever do anything like that? Uh, probably not in Clara City. You guys weren't hitting Mazatlan or anything, were you? 
Uh, boy, my spring breaks when I was in college. I did go to South Padre Island one year. Oh, oh, I did tell that. a story. That was who, fun. Who did you see perform? They had to have had a bad early 90s artist down uh, there. They didn't really. Was they Wright did, said Fred it, down there? Yeah. <laughs> could have, he could have been. We might have missed him. That would have been a lost opportunity for sure. Saigon kick or right said Fred was down no. there playing a, a brief just, set. Just a lot of beach time, I was, remember. Was the party hosted by Dan Cortez? Yeah. <laughs> Downtown Julie Brown. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> South Padre Island. I See, I never, we, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I forgot, but now I'm remembering. None of us ever went on any kind of a spring break when we were young no, uh, because we didn't have true. any money and... Uh, but I heard stories. My buddies used to go down there. My high school and college buddies would go go down there, and they'd just act like animals. Animals. That was really the only spring break trip I took. Did you get laid? Jeez. Don't answer, Brad. Answer. Oh, no, do <laughs> answer, Brad. Oh, no, no, no. What, what are you talking about, Janelle? What do you mean, don't answer, Brad? <laughs> Randy and I Janelle want to know. Janelle sticks up for me. I like Janelle. Janelle and I need to have lunch again. I can see you going on some of those vacations, Janelle. You and some of your friends. I did. You have gone a few times? Was it a every year thing? Or I'm scared to talk about this now. What, are you? <laughs> what happened? Uh, what happened? No, no. Yeah. We, uh, you hit all the hot spots, didn't you? Yeah, high school and college, I think I did. God oh, damn. Wow. Like, what, what are some places you went to? Give us the rundown. Uh, Florida, a lot. I think I went to Mexico a few times. I don't. What know. do you mean? You think you went to Mexico? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Like that. that long ago. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. We, we know this game, Reg. You know, we do. We 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 uh, we've, we've worked with people over the years who they, they just couldn't quite remember. They couldn't quite piece together the details of these monumental moments in their life. You know. Well, Janelle's a private person. I'm not going to go. I mean, Randy's after you. gone on all these vacations. He comes back no tan lines ever. Did you? You know that about I, Randy? I did not. Never had I a did. tan line. I'm not going to go after you. I'm not going to ask you if you got laid. <laughs> I saved that kind of stuff for the dudes. I'd never pick on you like that. But, I mean, did you did you see any bands? I rap, don't remember. Rap artists. No, I don't remember that either. Uh, it was a lot of what you're saying, like, beach time, get your hair braided, go to these bars. Yeah. You know. Slushy start, drinks and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I guess the only spring break that I was ever exposed to was watching on MTV. And I, I, I it, to me, it yeah. always seemed like they, they had... It a, really they, wasn't like that. They had a series of bands set up, and here comes... Uh, oh, God, Pauly Shore comes out <laughs> to... Uh, have a beer bong contest. I don't know what your experience was like, Janelle, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. It was like, kind of like that. Was it a little, bit, a little okay. bit? A right. little bit. I mean, just because it was, well, like Mexico, that always gets a little yeah. more out of hand. When you were younger, mm -hmm. were, you, were you the same personality you are now, or were you quite so. a bit more wild? I think so. I mean, well, definitely more wild than I am now. Yeah. Like yeah. quite a bit more wild or well, just a little more? I mean, nothing. i like not worried about talking about anything I did, nothing like bad nothing stories, like but but I mean, obviously you could get after it a little more. Yeah. You didn't have like a real job or anything. No, didn't you come didn't back have... with a tramp stamp or anything? No, Because no. Wapple did. I did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> He'll show it if you ask nicely. Yeah. Oh, Let's talk man. about it, Wapple. <laughs> Janelle used out. to kick ass and take names, man. Shut this out. <laughs> <laughs> Wapple, really? You got a tramp stamp? Yeah. Shut oh, up. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> what? What is he saying? I can't what? hear him over there. What are you, you saying? Turn your mic up. I said I got a tramp stamp. You it's a butterfly. It's a, a butterfly. butterfly. Yeah. Sure. How are you spelling butterfly? Out of curiosity. <laughs> One or two T's. T's. <laughs> Were you sober? No, I never got a tramp stamp. Oh no, no, he didn't. God, I, I don't had, have a tattoo. I'm I was not so cool. excited. I've never been anywhere. <laughs> Janelle used to walk up to the front door of Senior Frogs, kick it open. <laughs> She'd kick it open and say, Norwegian's in the house, bitch. <laughs> they had your drink ready. They knew you were coming. Totally. Set up some cans. It's kind of like Norm from Cheers. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> Just a whole line of tequila. You're going yep. through shot after shot. Yep. Right? You better have a lot of canned beer in the back because the Norwegians are here. Oh, my God. Get that old Milwaukee ready. Yeah. Oh, God, we used to drink a lot of old Milwaukee, Brad Ryder. We did. 
Oh, now right. you talk about it, it makes me like want to puke just thinking about it. Oh, did you, yeah. Did Ugh. you get sick when you were down there? Did I'm you have sure, a little? But, a you know, few like too you many? think about what you used to drink in those days and go, how in the oh, world yeah. did I do that? Why yeah. did I do that? Yeah, I wish I could have had that experience. I mean, I guess, Josh, we sort of made up for it when we were in our 20s going on some of those radio station trips. Well, I mean, you made up for I it made for up all for of us. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, that uh, it was disgusting. Especially that first Jamaica trip. That was something else. Yeah. Woo wee. Yeah, then uh, that um we went to the British Virgin Islands. That one uh that one I got a little crazy on the first one. Yeah, I wish we would have had those spring break experiences, but I guess we made up for it. I'm so jealous. I've never had a chance to do something like that. Well, that would be either. maybe it's because it's better for me not to. Well, you guys are just. <laughs> if they ever want to have uh, do that again, you're welcome to go. Yeah, just, Nick just and I will stay a, here. Just pick, a week a, just pick a week in March and go and pretend right. it's your spring break. Yeah, you know, uh, Wapple and Ashley. If you feel left out, if it ever comes up again, you know, Josh and I aren't going. You guys can go. I don't. It, it's not the radio station trips. It's just I haven't been anywhere in general. Well, well Wapple, we haven't either Wapple, outside of the radio station trips. When, when I was your age, the only trips and Ashley. What are you, 26? Yep. That was when I, when we first started doing things like this through the radio. So don't feel left out. I, I never went on a trip of my own until long after these radio station trips dried up. So we're right on, we're, we're, we're right on the same pace as we were. Yeah, I, I want to get out to Vegas. I still haven't been to Vegas. Uh, okay, yeah, you need to do all that. Right. Waffle, a little overrated. The station sent you to Los Waffle, Angeles. Waffle, you yeah. couldn't handle Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could. He nope. ends up in a bathtub nope. with oh, a yeah. kidney and missing, that whole thing. Yeah. lights and the weed and the lights and the yeah. sounds and the and weed. The weed and the lights. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a shame if you were tiger, A tiger in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle, you're the dude where that kidney story would really happen. Yeah. It would. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, I'd find myself in a shady alley sometime at night. Yep. Yeah, we sent Wapple, well, the station sent Wapple out to Los Angeles for a movie premiere. And uh, we had asked him, well, what'd you think of the movie? And he's like, yeah, you know, it really wasn't all that good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't going to lie. <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't have to lie. You could have just said, oh, uh, we never went yeah. or something like that. <laughs> wasn't my- choice of movie. Oh, that was awesome. The movie makers <laughs> paid for his trip. Right, they're, they're sitting there going, all right, what do you got to say? They're, they're listening. You know, they, they want you to give it a good review. Yeah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> oh my God. Could have been better. Yeah, yeah, you could have just, you know, not said much of anything. Oh, so funny. Or told us ahead of time, don't ask me how it was. <laughs> <laughs> the God, whole reason myself. he's out there, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> what a friggin' joke. <laughs> All right, I was saying earlier, everybody, I was saying earlier, uh, finally something to watch on television. The Timberwolves got a home game tonight playing the Detroit Pistons. I'm uh, looking forward to that. I, I would uh, encourage you to watch the first half because there may not be much of a game in the second half. You don't think it'll be much of a game? You're I, probably I, I, right. I it better really not be. So. You're yeah. probably right. Yeah, I really don't think so. Even without Carl, you know, they're doing all right. Yeah. Doing better than all right, I guess. They are, and as Brad said the other day, I mean, they're pretty much locked into one, two, or three. They're, they're not going to fall much farther than that. Yeah. It doesn't look like the Clippers are playing some bad basketball right now. They're, so they're the five ahead of them in the four, you know, the four yeah. spot, so they're not moving much. Yeah, they're in, they're in good position right now. The, the interesting part is obviously where they end up, but it's what's happening behind them right now. That's fun to watch because you've got Phoenix, Sacramento, Dallas, New Orleans, all of them, even the Lakers after their double OT win last night, all these teams trying to figure out who's going to end up out of that play-in game scenario right? and in six or five, and it's a mad scramble. I mean, you know, between New Orleans and the Lakers, there's four games that separate uh, five teams. And if you throw the Clippers in there who are falling on their face right now, um, that's five teams. So it's it's crazy right now they, what's happening behind the Wolves. They, they could play any of those seven teams in the first Easily. round. I mean, really, they just don't know. Yeah, they could play any of those seven teams. It's a full-on goat rodeo. Timberwolves signed T.J. Warren for the rest of the season. I, I like having T.J. Yep, Warren It's a good around. move. 
I like having TJ around. It's a nice I do. veteran presence. Michael Grady called last night's match. Oh, by the way, I watched the fourth quarter and the overtimes of that Lakers Milwaukee. Yeah. But that game was mental. It was because they were way behind in that game. They made a great comeback last night. But just it, it that four, fourth quarter and the overtimes in the Bucks <laughs> yeah. Lakers game. I think the Lakers ended up winning. It was, did. was absolutely it was it was without everything. LeBron. Yeah, LeBron was sitting there looking cute with some funny little red hat on. <laughs> it, it had everything you would expect to see from an NBA game. It had great playmaking, you know, teamwork. It had very dramatic three-point baskets, and it had piss-poor officiating. Everything you expect to see from today's NBA. Uh, Michael Grady, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for Michael Grady. He called a, the other TNT game last night, the Mavericks and Kings alongside Greg Anthony. Good for him. He's excellent at what he does. I look forward yeah. to hearing him tonight. Nick, if you want to adopt another NBA team as your second NBA team the rest of the season, uh, why don't you adopt the Houston Rockets? Okay. I'll tell you why. They've won nine in a row, and they are one game out of the play-in. They are one game behind your favorite, your next favorite team, the Golden State Warriors. So if they finish ahead of Golden State, Golden State doesn't even make the play-in game. That would be a beautiful thing. That they're only, be one, beautiful they're only thing. one game out. They've won nine in a row now. I, That's uh, fabulous. I appreciate the heads up. Yeah, speaking of the Golden State Warriors, okay, Draymond Green, like I said, he he just can't handle it. It, it, it. This is just too much for him. Now, of course, this wasn't nearly as terrible as what he's capable of, kicking guys in the penis and, <laughs> and strangling dudes half to death on the bat. He, you know, he gave a player a clothesline last night, you know, fighting through a screen, and it was just a classic Draymond Green, too, where he blatantly, you know, Close lines this player, and then when the whistle blows, it, well, what? 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 I do? It, it's he just can't handle it. No. He got a common foul for this. I, I don't think he even got a technical. Whatever. Look at the video. It's just I'm so burned out on this dude. For whatever I mean, reason, he, he just can't control himself. I, I can see why they called it just a common foul, but it's because it's him where. It gets, you know, blown up. You don't think that should have been a flagrant foul? Um, I, you know, come on. I don't. I don't think it should have been a flagrant. Yeah, whatever. Foul. I, again, I'm. I'm I think he was out fighting his way. He was fighting his way through that, through that screen to get over there. I, I, oh, come I on. don't. Anyway, but it's because it's him. I mean, we see this all the time. In the NBA. Yes, he grabbed his neck. I, I see the part of it, but. Um, I just don't we, care We anymore. see that, those kind of battles all the time. The don't NBA. care. He, he doesn't care, so why should we? Yeah. The Minnesota women's basketball team, uh, Golden Gopher women's, they advanced in the NIT. They beat just a little snippet of what that team could have been had Mara Braun stayed healthy, you know, the second half of the basketball season because she is such a great player. It's just, it's too bad. You feel bad for him because they, they had a lot of things on track until she got hurt. Just for the record, we could have fun with this maybe. Mankato State's women's and men's basketball teams have reached the Division II Final Final Four. Oh, wow. Hey. Hmm. Nice. You might want to look that up. Their Impressive. ages, I mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mankato State's women's and men's basketball teams have reached the Division II Final Final Four. That's impressive. On the surface, things seem pretty normal for Shohei Otani so far. And there appears to be no hard feelings between Shohei and the Los Angeles Angels fan base. This kind of surprised me. Yesterday, you know, spring training games are still wrapping up. They must be wrapped up for good now. But yesterday, Otani made his return to Angel Stadium in Anaheim for the first time as a Dodger in a spring training game. And they played him a tribute video, and the crowd gave him a standing ovation. That's no fun. (laughs) I agree. No. That isn't any fun. He appeared to get a little emotional as he watched the video. I didn't expect that. I thought the Angels fans would say, boo, you son of a bitch. Not only for leaving town. Well, not town. Not only for leaving their club, (laughs) but uh, for all this, uh, the accusations. They really are laid back in Southern California, aren't they? There might have been a fair amount of Dodger fans there anyway because the game was in LA. Well, but, right, but you, you still, know. I think we would have noticed some static. Maybe his head's yeah. not in the game, though. Maybe his head's not in the game. He went 0 for 2 with two strikeouts on six total pitches. 
That doesn't Jeez. sound like him, does Not it? Not at all. No. Dude. All right, so I guess we'll wait on the mayhem, depending on the results of the investigation. No one else is surprised that the Angels fans didn't. I, I'm not surprised at this point, just because there there are there are accusations out there about Otani's situation right now, and until the investigation actually proves something that of his involvement, if there's involvement. I think people are going to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. Since when have people given anyone the benefit of the doubt over accusations? <laughs> That's a new thing. Usually people jump to conclusions and just tear it's into true. you. They no, tear into right. you. And, and I think the reason why Angels fans don't directly attack Shohai isn't the common theme amongst Angels fans that it's not Shohai's fault, it's the organization's fault for not building around him better mm. while he was there. I mean, they did have Mike Trout around him. <laughs> but wasn't yeah. that the common theme? Hey, you better do something yeah. for Trout and Otani, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Even back in the day, they were always saying, you better do something for Trout before right. we lose him. And they tried a little bit in the last couple of years, and it kind of blew up in their face. Anyway, like I said, we'll wait for the mayhem if it is to come. A Yankees ball player. Back to spring training games wrapping up. A Yankees ball player by the name of Oscar Gonzalez got to the plate, and then fouled a baseball off his own face. Volpe breaking for third, and Gonzalez on a freak mishap there as he fouled that ball off, a pitch rising up and in. It looks like it went off his face. Did you hear that crack? Yep. That wasn't all bat. That was nose. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's up on 93x.com. Can we did play he, that again, Did he shatter Josh? like his orbital bone or oh, something? It yeah, broke he his, broke it. It broke ah. his eye socket for him. Oh, ah. Oh. Uh, Volpe breaking for third and Gonzalez. Crowd's throwing up in the in the aisle. I managed, uh, I managed to follow a ball off my face when they brought me out for the TC home run contest at Target Field. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I was just an underhand you know, softball, not a 98-mile-an-hour fastball, but still, it was pretty embarrassing. They say this kid is currently resting in a hospital. It broke his eye socket for him. That's awful. He sure handled that well, though, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see. What did he do? I mean, it looked. I mean, he's obviously in pain, but he was just kind of standing there, like, "Oh man, my eye hurts." Oh, so he, he didn't go down. Well, he went down at he first. Did. I'm just saying, right afterwards, he's standing around, like, "Oh, I, I would think they would have rushed him back." That's pretty tough. Broke his orbital <laughs> bone. Yeah, I would have milked that for a while. <laughs> But they did show the crowd, and there were people just kind of like on their cell phones. Some people didn't seem that they noticed at all. Maybe they just didn't realize how serious it was. You would have milked it for a while, Ashley? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I played hockey with a guy who loved to, oh, he loved. She just ru- she runs the bases crying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this one dude I played beer league with, now, number one, it was hilarious to play with a guy, but because he was just a magnet for pucks. He would always get rung in the cheek or the <laughs> ass or the knee or the ass. He would always get rung up by a, a, a slap shot. And he, when he would take one in the ankle, oh, he would milk that forever. <laughs> the, you know, the, the whole Peter Griffin. Ah. Exactly. Ah. He we just got such a, like, okay, dude, we get it. It hurts. It can't be that bad. But he liked everyone to, you know, he, he enjoyed the attention of everyone skating over and saying, you going to be all right? Ah. Ah! Oh. <laughs> ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. That was him. That was fun. We even would tell the opposition and be like, "Okay, if any of you dudes are going to fire one from the point, aim at that dude right there." You know? Oh my god! We would. All right, someone help me with this one. The St. Saint Paul Saints named their ball pig for the upcoming baseball season. You, you know how they do that, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I love that. They give it a cute name. It's just, <laughs> it's it's way more. I, I actually enjoy this one because it's uh, baseball and it's the cute little pig, piglet. I hate that snowplow gimmick that you guys think is so funny. But anyway, uh, explain this one to me. The pig is named Ozem Pig. What does that mean? Oh. Oh. It's a parody on Ozempic. What, hey, uh, what is Ozempic? It's a really popular drug lately. I thought it was maybe for people who are diabetics, but yep. yeah. folks are realizing they can lose weight by taking this pill. Oh. Yeah, a lot of celebrities have been accused of, of taking it. I think it might be, like, I think you can get it in, like, a shot form, too. Like a shot glass? Yeah, <laughs> you just down it like you would yeah, no. tequila. <laughs> like a needle. Okay, Ozempig. Now, I understand that there are people who are upset with the Saints. They don't like the name. And now, I'm just going to take a guess. 
Uh, these people think that the Saints are being insensitive to di- uh, diabetics or something. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really surprised they went this route because that that is a pretty, uh, like that topic is is dangerous because, yeah, a lot of people, um, well, from what I've read, I don't know if this is accurate. A lot of diabetics like can't get their hands on Ozempic, or there's like a shortage of it because yeah, everybody people using, using it, it for weight loss. Yeah, for weight loss. I've yeah. read the okay. same thing. That that yeah. I think that's the controversy, right? Really? Well, f me running sideways. Did you know about that, Janelle? I, I never, did. I never heard of this. Yep. Of course, Janelle knows about that. I mean, she's <laughs> up with all the trends. <laughs> people are saying Ozempic <laughs> is a shot. Okay, it's not a pill. It's a it's a shot. Oh, a shot. Interesting. All right. And Firefighter She's just said that there's some lawsuits against them for some harm to patients that are taken. Yeah. Yeah, there's just a, it's well, just one of those fads again. People are going to end up like not taking it anymore and then they're just going to gain all the weight back that they that they lost by using some pretend miracle drug. I thought they had some other funny names well, that they could have went with. What what were their other options? Well, there was Sloppenheimer. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, Squeedle I, juice. Squeedle juice. <laughs> I thought these were past names. These were the names that were runners up. Yeah, these, okay, these are runners. Yeah. Go ahead. What else uh, what else did they have? Malibu Lardy. Oh, like Malibu. Barbie. Okay, Barbie. I just got it right now. I was one before I didn't get it. Uh, uh, Artifice Squeal Intelligence was another one. Porky Blinders. What does that mean, Porky Blinders? Uh, there's a, a television Peaky show Blinders. called Peaky yeah. Blinders. Yeah. Very popular. Well, do you think the Saints are going to stick with this, or do you think they'll change it? Because uh, Well, they I must have know. known. I mean, I don't think they were. I almost think they're going to bring more attention to it if they don't have it named that now. Oh, yeah. You're probably Well, right. what do they really care? Yeah. You know? So we changed the piglet's name that fetches the baseball. It's not like, you know, something that matters, yeah. right? Ozem Pig. A play on Ozem Pick. I'll try to keep up with. I'll try to stay in tune with it. <laughs> Help him out, Janelle. I want to know if the pig is skinny now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be a good bit, actually. <laughs> well, it's just a little thing, right? So it's pig. so it is. Why is it so thin all of a sudden? <laughs> Ever since I got the name. A little skinny little some bitch. Left-handed specialist Jesus made a suggestion. They didn't go with it, obviously. He he likes porco chains. Anybody like that? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. He's not gonna like that one. <laughs> they should have done that. Yeah. It's fun. It's not. It you know, is. I, 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 just, I just have so much hate. It's more fun than the snow plow. I don't like the snow plow thing. Either. I hate that friggin' gimmick. That's stupid. That's right, Brad Ryder. <laughs> Speak it. Speak it. It's weird what people get mad about. You know, it's just a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Some people just like it. it if you don't like it, you don't like it. I okay. can get mad about things. Oh, nobody's saying you can't. I, I believe I said. It's you just got mad at that. I said, I, it's weird to me. It's not yeah. weird. It's a weird. It's not weird. All right, we got a phone call coming in. We hope here in a minute or two we're going to fly into a Minnesota Wild report with uh, Marcus Foligno. What could I, what could I toss your way real quick before we go? Oh, uh, that Vikings kicker, Greg Joseph. He's out of here. He signed with the Packers. Do you care? No. That, that makes three. Didn't, yeah, one. didn't we sign a new kicker a few weeks ago? We did. We signed yeah. a rookie. Some guy okay. never kicked in the NFL. Yeah, Parker Lewis or something. That makes one. Two, three straight Viking stories that I've brought up and you've said you don't care. You people are coming around. You're it's coming late. around. It's late March. Yeah, I, I don't like care. It. That's right. It's Marcus Bellino from the Minnesota Wild checking in for his bi-weekly Wild Report. Welcome to the latest report, Marcus Bellino. It's all on you. Go. <laughs> How we doing, guys? How you guys doing? Put good. Out spot right away. <laughs> nice to have you back. We're doing real hey. good. I can do, I'll give you the weather report. Well, where the hell? Where are you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm where you guys are, in, in the in the basement, in the this beautiful, sunny, warm climate we got going on now. <laughs> oh my god! Beautiful mid-January morning. Yes. Yeah. Oh man! You're like Brutal. the rest of us, Marcus. You probably thought we, you, you know, we were off the hook, but then here it comes. Yeah, right? I thought yeah. it was over. I was stupid. I thought I thought it was going to be the best uh, winter we've ever had. Yep. We're back at it. It was about ready to be the best, you know, in history, the mildest winter. In, I mean, this this storm likely won't change that in the grand scheme of things, but here we got, yeah, we got kicked. 
right in the ass here a couple of days ago. <laughs> what can you do? That's right. Uh, That's you, right. We were just, uh, you know what we were talking about, Marcus Foligno? We were talking about the St. Saint Paul Saints, the uh, the AAA ball club here in town, baseball club in town. They got the they got a little piglet that runs out onto the ball field and fetches baseballs and stuff. It's a gimmick they've been doing for years. Have you ever had any, um, I guess, exotic is the word, exotic pets in your life? Um... I, I, does a guinea pig count as an exotic pet? I think so. Yeah, a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and then I sold it a month later because I couldn't keep up with all the how much time it crap the whole time. It seemed, so. <laughs> <laughs> it a, a lot more than you think. The greatest. That was the last. That was the last uh, pet I've owned. How That's much? it. That's uh, yeah. No, nothing. Uh, nothing exotic or anything like that. No snakes. No weird stuff. No dogs. I don't have dogs, so um, my mom never allowed that. So that was. Uh, that's how it's been going, but guinea pig probably was the worst too because it would it would scratch you whenever you wanted to play with it. I don't even know why I got that thing, but that was uh, that, that lasted a, that lasted a month. What if your kids wanted a pet? Would you say yes or no to that? Uh, yeah, probably probably no. I mean, it's just so tough. I mean, trying trying to take care of humans is tough enough, so I don't know how you can take manage a dog. I think I feel I think I feel worse leaving a you know leaving a dog unattended than than my child. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I don't I don't do pets. That's why I, maybe maybe when all the kids are out, I'll get my I'll get my dog. So yeah, I mean I, I get it. You you travel so much for five six months out of the year. You don't want to leave that all on your wife to take care of this pet. Um, yeah. But the guinea pig, you, you couldn't keep up. You said you couldn't keep up with all the turds. It was uh, firing in the. Oh my god, this thing was. Crap and left, right, and center. It was insane. <laughs> was like, it was like, you had to clean the cage, and then if it got hot, it would stick to the bottom of the cage. Like, it was just a mess. You had the power. I wouldn't have a power washer, but that's something that if I probably did have a power washer, it would be a lot easier to clean that thing. But no, I just scrubbed this by hand, man. That's just brutal. So <laughs> I was my mom. I'm like, let's get rid of this thing. I don't want it anymore. It got, if it got hot, they would stick to the floor <laughs> of the cage. Oh, God. Yeah, it got hot. You could just. Yeah, the stench. It wasn't. It wasn't great. Oh yeah, the smell. You're right, though. We had one of those growing up too. You did, Josh. You, oh yeah, they pooped and peed. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, nonstop. The smell can get bad pretty quickly too. Did either one of them have an interesting name? Yeah, my guy's name was Gus. Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Gus, Gus. 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 Not the Gus bus, not the Gus bus, but uh, the Gus Gus. Gus yeah. Gus. Well, you, you were a uh, tiny little kid. What's the reference there? Um, geez, you know what it was? I forget the name of this movie, but it's just two old, these two old men. One, the old man of Dennis the Menace. It's a freaking, uh, it's oh, a movie. Uh, you're talking about a, dir- a filthy old, uh, dirty old gentleman. What was it? Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon. Grumpy old man. That's Grumpy. Right. Yeah. Grumpy old man. Isn't he, isn't he Gus? is he Gus in that movie? Yes, Gus one Gus of the yeah. characters is Gus, Gustafson or yeah. something? Those yeah. were funny movies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. I think I watched that with my, like my, my parents or something. I was like, yes, Gus, that's good. And I got the guinea pig like a week later. So I was like, There you go. That's a cute little cow. What was your uh, <laughs> guinea pig's name, uh, Cubby? Porco Chains, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember. It was my sister's. I, and I was super little. I don't remember what it was. It didn't last very long. My parents yeah. said uh, they brought it to a farm, and I think I know what that means oh, now. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, real farm trick. That means you had it for dinner the next week. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 forget, I forgot, too. Yeah, we actually uh, grow up, my sisters, they actually, we actually had a bunny. We had a bunny named Hopkins, and uh, my mom decided <laughs> to... Uh, Hopkins, yeah. And my mom, my mom decided to uh, clean its cage, so we put it in another cage outside a nice hot day in Buffalo, and... Must have got a phone call and uh, came back out probably 45 minutes to an hour later, and and Hopkins was uh, pretty dried up. So oh no uh, no oh, that's boy. Awesome. yeah yeah it was, my mom felt terrible and then uh, and then um, I, I'll never forget it. actually I remember this we had a I remember because it, it was a Kmart bag and we had <laughs> we did a burial in the backyard oh, <laughs> my God. sister was falling <laughs> and my mom was like I don't my mom had to play it off like it came out like a couple of years later I think. <laughs> got older that uh that she messed up cleaning the cage and left it outside in the sun oh, that is a great story <laughs> oh my god oh, no. yeah. so the yeah. hot weather killed hopkins oh, that's <laughs> terrible yeah yeah and yeah, your, was your sister was very upset yeah i mean she was we weren't really this bunny thing was getting out of it, it was just like the guinea pig crapping everywhere <laughs> drinking every time so 
But I mean, bunnies are a hell of a lot cuter. So yeah, they are cuter. Yeah, tough to see how that was, that was our <laughs> last last pet there as a family. That's, That's hilarious. A good call. That's yeah. great. We yeah. had we had rabbits too for a brief period of time, and then you know how it goes. Uh, we had started with two, and next thing you know, there was twenty two. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, we thought we had, but my dad thought we, he had, you know, same-sex rabbits in the cage. Uh, that wasn't the case. Next thing you know, there's rabbit babies just spraying out of this cage. That just <laughs> multiplying. We had to, I don't know what happened. I guess I don't want to know what uh, the old man came up with uh, for that problem. Oh, my God, that's a great story about old Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, so that's all. Don't go so well in our family, I guess. So I, don't, I get it. Uh, yeah, I get it. They're not, they're not for everybody. Yeah. They're not for everybody. Well, here we go. You've got a game tomorrow night at home against San Jose, and you boys got your work cut out for you, don't you? Yeah, oh we do. Oh, my God. What I mean, the hell gotta, is that? we got to keep quiet. So, I mean, uh, scoreboard watch is not, not our friend right now. Um, but we got a chance to, to get closer tomorrow and then uh, – beat a team that we absolutely have to beat on Saturday in Vegas against Vegas. So um, we'll keep it interesting if we do that uh, come Saturday. So that, that's, the, that's the main goal, but it's all about uh, just one game at a time here. That's the only thing we can control. And Got to get gotta get the game against San Jose first before we think about the game against Vegas. Yeah, you got to get her done. You need points. Was that one of your children in the background there, Marcus? Would she like to say something on the radio? <laughs> Uh, my daughter Olivia, I'm, I'm taking her to the bus right now, so she's just, she, you know, she's just jumping in the snow and rolling around, getting dirty before uh, heading to school. <laughs> I always do. That's a hell of a lot of fun. That's great. But yeah, we're just, yeah, we're just hanging outside right now. Oh, good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night, yeah. seven o'clock at the X against the San Jose Sharks, and then the game against. Is it, is it, uh, is it a back-to-back thing with Vegas? No, uh, I, mean, I think we have Sunday off, and then we play again Monday. Uh, we got a nice little homestand, so okay. Um, and then we got to go to Vegas to play them one more time. So there's a potential, yeah, four point four point swing that we can throw our way if we uh, if we can beat them twice in, in the next uh, eleven games we have left. All right, all right, yeah. It's uh, it's down to uh, what uh, ten, eleven, twelve games or something left like that in the season. You know what else we were talking about yeah. earlier, Marcus Fellino? We were talking about spring break. Um, oh, most of us never had a chance to go on a spring break, uh, mainly because, well, some of us were unpopular dicks uh, <laughs> that didn't have uh, anyone. Some of us didn't have the money as young people to go on. So Janelle went on a spring. Brad Ryder went on a spring. Did you ever have your big spring break trip, Marcus? And and if so, where did you go? Like, are you talking like the high school spring break? Yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Cancun, and uh, you're, you're there for. 200 bucks all you can eat drink and all that stuff yeah 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 the good old days no, the high school days. i i was i was never allowed to never, never allowed to go on those trips that's that's one thing yeah i never i never got those trips uh and then i think too with like the hockey season always being in the way never got it so that's one thing i missed out on yeah all my buddies and stuff would organize it and i remember i remember was getting together you got to bring a flyer home to your parents and sign it and then it'd be part of the school and then boom these guys would be on a on a Sunwing flight or whatever down to Rio Cancun and then yeah no oh, yeah fun so, stories <laughs> same I thing. missed out on you missed out on it? yeah it's not same thing for your brother then I'd imagine he didn't get to go yeah 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 I'm pretty sure he never never did that at that, at that time yeah now was that because so. your folks said look you guys you two have great potential we don't want to be any part of you blowing that opportunity <laughs> was it was it that kind of a thing did they <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think the part of you know, coming down to to Mexico and the, you'd hear the stories or whatever of uh, I don't know, maybe some kidnappings or what have you that down there. So I don't know. It was a little bit of a who's going down there with what? What by yourself? No way. So that's how it ended up going. So Janelle got Never thrown got out of a it. kid and play concert. <laughs> <laughs> she got thrown right out of a, a kid and play show. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, that's, you know, but maybe maybe one day uh, you can uh, have that experience. You can get that spring because now it's now it's almost uh, normal to go with your high school age kids or college age kids. That's become a, a trend lately. So maybe that'll be your first official spring break, Marcus. To go to go with with your kids? Yeah. Did you yeah. know that that's a thing? Oh. Now, 
Oh, okay, bringing them down there while they're while they're also with their friends. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. high yeah. high school mainly. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, that's a little bit better. That's a little, a little bit more uh, parental supervision, I guess. You're, you're kind of yeah. like the chaperone. It's more safe. <laughs> well, and then you hit the parents up for money. You don't no, have to pay smart. for it. The parents right. end up getting more wild than the kids. Yeah, do. Exactly. Exactly. the only, yeah, the only <laughs> bad side they is think if something goes wrong, the kids it's on to you. Bed, but that's not happening. <laughs> right. So you got the parents doing the body shots on the bar and everything. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the kids just looking at them like, what the hell is wrong with <laughs> And then that's what I say. I never got to experience this. Let me alone. Be so <laughs> yeah, I finally get to go on spring break and mom and dad are, snort, yeah. are snorting rails and doing shots. At the, you know, no way. Yeah, yeah that's right. How, oh, have, man. Uh, how have you, you know... The stories uh, popping up here lately, uh, Shohai Otani, uh, what else have we been talking about lately? Uh, so often oh. we, so often we tell stories of athletes getting in trouble. Marcus Foligno, how have you managed to stay out of trouble? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, um, you know what, it's tough. It's tough nowadays, obviously, with all the phones and everything going on around here. I, I, the whole thing with the Shohai Otani thing is kind of crazy that, that's the that's guy that does all of his, uh, it's his interpreter, right? Yeah. yeah. The only way for them. So that's, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy that people can even, yeah. You got to be careful of who's in your inner circle, I guess. Yeah. Got a good so, inner circle. There's so many ways to get in trouble, and there's so many ways to get caught doing things these days, as you said, because of the phone. The phone, the phones have changed everything. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the way that we go about our lives now, it's it's there's nothing that's basically secret anymore. Everything's trackable. Oh. Yeah, yep. So it makes yeah. it more difficult. It's Absolutely. much easier. It's much easier to find trouble. You're right, or get in trouble. As as a veteran on your club, when you guys go on road trips, do you have to sometimes pull the young guys aside and say, "Look, that's not a good idea." Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think when you know you enter like a public setting, or if we go to the bar or club or or something like that, I mean, all these places have you know cameras and and, and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, you you try not to give the the fatherly speech, but everyone needs to understand that you know. I think I think first and foremost is like you know at the end of the day you're representing Minnesota and the, and the wild and. You know, people will, if someone else does it that's not uh, an athlete and, and they, they'll probably, you know, don't even look at it, but it, it'll pick up more juice for someone that grabs something from, you know, an athletic standpoint or a team standpoint and can make a bigger or bigger stink about it, right? So that's the thing is that you're just under a microscope all the time whenever you do something or go out. So that's the thing. The guys know it. Um, it's, it's good, too. Before the season starts, we always get kind of like one of those talks by the, the NHL that throws on like a video and stuff like that just to, you know, make, give you an understanding of what's going on out there and what's what's, what's uh, some of the issues that they're seeing and with athletes and stuff. So it gives a little bit of an eye-opener before the season starts to uh, kind of check everyone in uh, before, uh, you know, doing some some special things and we, we always do like rookie parties and stuff like that so you're always going to do something as a team so when a full team shows up I mean 20 guys everyone's going to kind of look at you so it's uh, yeah it's something that we've always talked about and, and uh, first and foremost you know you represent uh, Minnesota so you want to make sure you're doing it right professionally yeah I mean you, they, they, they give you a reminder of what's at risk you know uh, yeah, if you're going to be yeah. horsing around you got to reel in the young guys once in a while I get it I mean you're you're, you're lacing them up with guys who are 19, 20 years old. God dang! I mean, uh, if- yeah, and they're they're growing up on the social media stuff. Like, I mean, I'm I'm in it too, but they're they're more like you know with all t- and everything, right? Like, we see some old school videos of of these kids when they're 10 years old, right? That we can bring up and, and laugh about it because uh, you know, but they're that's like that's like their norm. Like that's like they're used to it. So it's just like that. When we see it, you're like, what's wrong with you? But when they see it, they're like, what's wrong? That's 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 what everyone does. And you're like, oh my god. So it's this generation coming in with all the phones and all the cameras and Instagram, Twitter. It's it's um, you know, it's part of their life now. So it's even it's even crazier trying to deal with the, the young guys coming in. Man, guys like Randy Shaver could just go buck wild oh, when he was a kid. Oh, man. back in the day, the stories I could tell. As long as everyone kept their friggin' mouth shut, nobody knew That's nothing. right. You know, you do. 
for people around our age, you hear that all the time. Thank God there weren't cell phones when we were kids. <laughs> uh, and, and to take that point even more, Josh, when you talk to like the old Viking players or the old twin players that are in their 70s and 80s now, those guys, I mean, the media were actually part of the posse. And so there wasn't, you know, the Sid Hartmans of the world weren't going to report you if right. you were out, you know, drinking or yeah. whatever. Right. I mean, those things were never discussed in public because there was kind of that, you know, that bond between the media and the players because you wanted the access. So the way to get the yeah. access right. was to be, you know, to be friends with them, basically. There was so. big time bro code back then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, then some of them, they bust themselves. Uh, they got to put a video of this or that that you just it's baffling that they don't realize that's going to get them in trouble. Flashing yeah, a gun or yeah, whatever you yeah, do. Yeah, 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 exactly. You got that. That's the thing with the social media now. These kids are they're always on. They'll go Instagram Live or something. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, you know, everyone's got their phones out now, taking videos of guys, and, and it's just, yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get in the background or someone sees in the background, right? Everyone can pause the video, analyze it, and then then turn it into something or, that should have been. But or Marcus AI. I mean, things can. Oh I mean, man, you don't put yourself. Start, that, 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 that stuff freaks me out. Yeah, there's a whole nother uh, layer of this, and that is, you know, being able to, you know, create things for that people have supposedly done or didn't do, and that's a problem too. So it's it's going to be it's going to get worse before it ever gets better. That's that for that sure. is very scary. We've even had talks here mm-hmm. about that. About I mean, you can make if you have enough recordings of someone, you can make them say anything yep. and have it yeah. sound pretty convincing. Yeah. And obviously, the video is a completely different thing. It would make it would make Wapple yeah. sound a lot more intelligent. So <laughs> it's probably a, a way to <laughs> our reads would actually be correct. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually been doing very well on those. If I could compliment Thank you. you. <laughs> Here's another thought. Here's, I guess, a closing thought on, you know, these days, you're a young person. You're raising all levels of hell. You get caught on video. You know, it's not good, but like Marcus was saying, if you're a pro athlete, there's a little extra, as he said, juice behind poor behavior. You're going to have the fan base questioning you. You're going to have the organization questioning you. This and that. You might lose a lot of money. Uh, Another motivating factor, although this this is an old school style of thought, another motivating factor to behave yourself is to not embarrass your parents. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I don't, <laughs> young people don't really think like this anymore. But that used to no. be a motivating factor. It used to be a motivating factor. Look, I can't have this coming back to my parents, and it brings me to it brings me back to a conversation we had on air with uh, one of my favorite Timberwolves players of all time. I, I can't even say his name sometimes without uh, getting emotional. Sam Mitchell was just one of the best players and best guys. Sam, yes. I loved Sam Mitchell. We had Sam Mitchell on the air, and we had this same conversation many years ago. And we asked him, you know, playing in the NBA, women throwing them some parties, how is it that you behaved yourself? And he said, there was one thing that always crossed my mind. His mother told him when he went into the NBA, if you ever embarrass me, I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're always thinking, like, what would my parents say? What would my yeah. parents say, right? So, yeah. or think. So. That's right. He's spot on with that. Absolutely. <laughs> I still worry about that. <laughs> I'm still scared of my father. So. <laughs> if my dad was alive, I'd still be scared of him, too. I was up until the day he yeah. died. Uh, yes. That's yeah. great. That is great. I was stuff. Yeah, more absolutely. afraid of him than what anybody else could do to me. <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter. Cops, whatever. I didn't want to mess with my dad. Yeah. Oh, boys. Yeah, that's right. That was the best deterrent. For sure. It really yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you were a kid when you'd start undoing that friggin' belt. Yep. Oh, we got that. Uh, <laughs> you know, almost worse was sound. just disappointing him. That was almost worse. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, no, just hit me with the belt again. That, that's fine. Don't be upset. If he didn't say anything or didn't scream, I knew it was really bad. Yeah. I hear you. I didn't have that screaming, Dad. I didn't. Um, he was very much a hellraiser himself. So as we got older, you know, he almost enjoyed some of the nonsense that my brother and I were involved in because I think it reminded him of when, when he was a kid. But when we were little, when we were little, when he yeah. started when he started undoing that belt, I, I thought, oh, God, this could be it right here. <laughs> so my, my dad just has an unbelievable death stare. That's the, that's the biggest thing that scares the crap out of him. One of those were like, 
you know, you, you're not looking at him, but on the peripherals, you know that he's staring at you. And you're oh, like, I'm yeah. looking at him right now. If I lock eyes with this guy right now, I'm going to die. Oh so you just, kinda, you, just, you just be like a little dog in the corner just kind of walking along. <laughs> <laughs> Cowering in the corner. Marcus, we yeah. got to wrap it up, but we always enjoy talking to you, and we wish you the best of luck in the upcoming games. Uh, we all Thanks, know guys. you boys can uh, can get her done. And so we'll talk again in a couple weeks, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking about, uh, you know, positive things. Absolutely. Sounds have a good, good one, Mark. Right. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. you very much. Kind of uh, Minnesota crazy. Wild Report brought to you by Luther Kia of Bloomington. Kind of crazy picturing Marcus Foligno intimidated by anything. So his yeah. dad must have been something else. This guy's been in 100 NHL fights, <laughs> but he's still afraid of his dad. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I remember watching his dad play, and uh, he was not not a shy dude. You know, I get it. There you go. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, yes. AI, so you can make anybody do or say anything if you're talented enough at it. So you have a option, two options here, Nick. Somebody makes an AI of you beating someone up. Uh, who is it? And then somebody uh, makes an AI of you uh, getting intimate with someone. Who's that? Holy so you, smokes. You can pick whatever you want. So the AI version of me can kick anybody's, anybody's ass. Anybody's ass. Number one can kick anybody's ass. Uh, um, AI me's beating the living hell out of Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd go Adam Sandler, but really you're going Kirk Cousins? Yeah, I think that would be funny Come for everybody to watch. No, I already said I only got one stab at this. I'm going to go with Captain Death Rocks. And I'm banging anybody I want, Whoever the AI want. version of me. Oh, God, this is tough to put me on the spot like that. <laughs> uh, well, I'll just answer the way I think the Brotherhood would want me to answer. Your mom. Uh, <laughs> for me, Jimmy Garoppolo is the same for both. <laughs> oh, my God. They would have wanted me to say your mom. <laughs> Randy Shaver, uh, take her easy, son. All right. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. We'll be back in a few minutes. More from uh, Janelle Klein when we return. Tab Fast Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The Ed Milet Show showcases the greatest peak performers sharing their journey, knowledge, and thought leadership. This is one of the all-time best pieces of advice ever given on the show. Actor Rain Wilson. The number one thing that psychologists point to with young people of why they are struggling so much in this mental health epidemic is they don't have resilience. So how do you build resilience if you don't understand suffering itself? The Ed Milet Show is available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Care 11's Janelle Klein. This is the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. I, oh, I itch so bad. Oh, I was just scratching. It's just bit. itchy in here. Welcome back to cooties. the 93X Man. Half-Assed Morning Show. Janelle Klein, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we understand why you didn't want to drive in yesterday. That sucked. Man, wasn't that something? Mm-hmm. That sucked. We were just talking about that. We're not used to it, so then all of a sudden it comes and you kind of forget how much that isn't fun <laughs> yeah that's you why didn't i need to be you didn't need to be taking those kinds of chances no i just drove as fast as i could home i just didn't want to be out there just yeah. go yeah. go yeah. go go right? it's pedal Smart. to the metal get out of the way passing people left and right yeah, absolutely <laughs> we learned today that uh janelle's the only one of us out of the six of us to ever go on a legit spring break good for you and it sounds like you did it multiple times i did yeah good for you yeah. that's awesome Will you act as our tour guide if we planned a morning show spring break oh next year? I would love that. You would act could as our tour really guide? Could we really make that happen? We just, could. All you'd have to do is just keep an eye on me and Nick. I could do it. I <laughs> yeah. could do it. I'd be the DD. I'd be the voice of reason. No, we don't want any DD. Yeah, we want no you fun. to party your yeah. ass off. Oh, well then, yes. We'll take cabs. <laughs> we'll, we'll take t- taxi cabs. We'll rent uh, bicycles. Oh my we- God, I'm in. Let's no, go. No, no one's going to be, we don't want anyone being sober. That's oh, silly. Oh, I thought that's what you're asking. <laughs> no, no, no. do no, it for you guys. Tour Lame. guide. Just, you, you've totally. been to these places. You yeah. Could, well, we, we could do this. Uh, well, I mean, well, we, well, what, what, how would you start? I mean, what would you recommend? Well, first, yeah, first where and foremost, where are we going? 
going? What do you say? Where would we go? You know what? I well, I think we could start small and just do like Florida. Okay. That's okay. Pretty well, reasonable. Like right? Miami. Miami, or okay. like we could do Fort Myers and do Twin Spring training. See, I hate I hate Florida. You really think that yeah. I, I, I would enjoy myself in Florida? I just I only say that because it's a shorter flight and it would right. be easy, right? No passports involved. Right. No passports. Okay. No like language barrier. Gotcha. Like it's just easy. Right. Um, right. You know, we could do Arizona, but we don't have the ocean then. Okay. Right? You're, oh, you, hey, you're, the, you're the tour guide. You've been to places. And, and we could make this work as, of course, if you ask our listening audience, we get more days off than anyone else on uh. planet Earth. <laughs> so we could go ahead and do this this time next year. I think we should do it. All right. So let's, Florida, what do you think, Cubby? I'd give it a shot. Yeah. I think you guys would regret that I was there. No. 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 I, I, I would be I thankful go out, that for you being there. I wouldn't want to be in the sun. Is there sun in Florida? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I have no interest in the beach. Who do you... Um, what about heat? Is there heat in Florida? Because I don't want that. Uh, very little. So we should go to, like, Des Moines. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We, I, I, I'm not a big sit-in-the-sun guy by any stretch of the imagination. You know that, uh, Cubby. So you, we can find you an umbrella. I'll be sitting under the deck. <laughs> Well, get you uh, get you an umbrella. Who do you bunk with, Janelle? Oh, in this crew? Yeah. You know what I would say? We got to rent a house. All right. And then it could be like a little reality show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Dude, the confessional. Like, yeah. Janelle, okay? That's exactly what I pictured when yeah. you said house. I imagine like cameras being set yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> like a big brother situation. <laughs> that would be great. A little... Uh, what did you call it? Uh, what's the show? Big Brother. Big Brother, a real world, real world type thing. Yeah. Okay, so if Janelle's our tour guide, um, and she's earned that, I think as the oldest, I have earned the right to make a couple of rules too, uh, or to <laughs> okay. have a have a responsibility, have a title, I guess is. Um, and with that oldest title, uh, my first rule would be no significant others. That's fair. No significant because I don't really like most of who you people have decided to shack up with. <laughs> so we uh, we all go on our own. No significant others. What uh, other what oh, other what other rules oh, do we need to add? Yes, Wapple. Josh has to have at least one shot or one weed. <laughs> no, no, no. We've already established it. Everybody's drinking. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not going to have a weed. Darn. Uh, He's drinking. Yeah, I, I will have a shot as long as it's keto friendly. So then the Perfect. first place we go is the bar. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did you just say? It has to be keto, keto friendly. friendly. Yes. <laughs> Explain that to me. I don't really know what it means. Oh, okay. I know it's a diet thing. Oh, yeah. Cubby's going to be, everyone's <laughs> drinking and nobody's driving. We've established that already. Hmm. But yeah, I think no one, no one gets to bring a significant other because I got to admit, Whenever we do one of our booze cruises, I always get kind of bummed out when I see you people significant others. They ruin a little bit of it. They I'm do. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, some of them are mean. <laughs> I they, think that's some what it is. Yeah. Some of them are mean. They yeah. talk a little trash. Okay, so there we are in Florida. We're uh, we're renting a house. Janelle's showing us around. No one has their significant others to ruin it. What other rule? Oh, uh, thongs or no thongs? What are we doing <laughs> on this uh, when we hit the beach? I I don't want to see that uh, from the ladies on this show. What about me? What from you? Yeah, I, I could see you wearing one out of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> is is your rule, Josh? Like only one pieces? <laughs> oh, not even that. I want you guys fully dressed. <laughs> I have a more of a sister relationship. All with right, the two so of you. Josh votes no thongs. I vote thongs. <laughs> I so, like I mean, to, what, but where are we going to go, though, Janelle? Like, well, are we, she said a Twins game, maybe if we're yeah. in Fort Myers. Yeah, I mean, is yeah. there other things? Like, do you, what what kind of stuff do you like I to do? Is mostly could, just drinking, or do you want to go well, see I mean, what's going on? Well, I mean, drinking should be part of all of what we do. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah, yes. Definitely. But, like, yes, a Twins game. Like, let's say we're in Fort Myers. We do a Twins game. Maybe we do, like, a boat cruise. There you go. Right. Right. Go out on the ocean. Go out All on the right. ocean. Forget about that fishing. I did that once. It was overrated. If anyone says we should rent a fish, no, don't. It's you overrated. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. really? That, that, sick. That does Seasick. sound kind of fun. I just let's just cruise, yep. right, Janelle? Just yeah, cruise around. Play some hip hop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the dead bodies. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Drink responsibly. Right. Nobody needs to get too drunk. Uh, right. No Janelle, one needs to in between every drink. What's that? <laughs> Have water in between yep. every drink. Hit yep. the gym. <laughs> you know, would you go to a topless club with us? I mean, anything for you guys. That's right. Would you I, really? Honestly, would I, you go I to I don't a, know. Have you ever been to one? I've never had. Oh, there's so much fun, Janelle. Well, I mean, 
what happens in Florida? (laughs) I I would like to believe that that motto would hold true with this group. (laughs) I've been on trips before where that motto did not hold true. Especially from the guy who... This is one of my favorite stories about you can't trust anybody. Uh, DTA, (laughs) wasn't that one of Stone Cold Steve Austin's? uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. He lived by that. DTA, don't trust anybody. We went out of town, a group of guys, many years ago. You got to be careful. Everyone be careful. Usually it's the guy that makes the most noise that you can't trust. One of our buddies stood up in front of the whole group of guys and said, all right, the first rule around here is that what happens here stays here. I don't want to get back home and my wife hears some story about me doing this and doing that. And we said, of course, we, you don't even have to say anything. We get, Of course, we all misbehave terribly. We get back to town. Guess who's the guy who told his wife everything? <laughs> yeah. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Everything. That's I'm how get, it always goes. I'm getting yep. my, my wife at the time, years ago, she comes out of the uh, bedroom. She's just been on the telephone with everybody else's wife. To, no. She's crying up and down. I got buddies of mine's wives calling me to get the story. <laughs> oh, no. I said, I'm not telling any of you anything. Yeah, that and the guy that leads the charge of we're not going to the strip club is the guy that later leads the yes. charge into the front door of the strip club. When we go on spring break next year, Janelle, I have another rule in mind. Okay. Uh, what was the first rule I made? Yeah, no significant others. As mm-hmm. the oldest, I get to make these rules. Uh, my second rule is let's ditch the idea of you never leave a man behind. Because if we leave someone behind, that's going to create some fun. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's nine that times out of ten. Nine times sure. out of ten. I agree with the saying, you never leave a man behind. Like Josh falls unconscious at the tattoo shop, right? <laughs> Normally, we'd never leave him behind. But on this trip, leave him there. <laughs> see what happens? See yes. if he can find his way home. Yes, see, Maybe I'll didn't... start a new, better life. Yeah. <laughs> and I needed you guys to leave me there for that. Yeah. When you come back into our party house with a broken nose, you know, and... And, uh, and, a uh, giant penis tattooed on my face. Yeah, then right. we're going to have fresh material for the radio. So for this trip and this trip only, we do leave a man behind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then speaking of tattoo shops, does that mean we all have to get a matching tattoo to commemorate oh, the trip? Oh, yeah. I'd I've like that. that. That'd be special. Yeah. I would be disgusted by such a thing. Okay. We could get if a we all little... got matching tattoos. But, but I have to let you make some rules, Janelle, because mm. you are our tour guide. Get a cute little uh, ankle tattoo. There Girls do that all the time when they go on girls' trips. What yeah. would it be? Like the 93X I... logo? Or Absolutely no, not. No, no. No. They don't want to associate with us. We can just get each other's names. <laughs> they deserve oh. better than that. Oh, my God. <laughs> each other's names. How cute would that be? This yeah. one says Dana, and this one says what? And then I... when someone gets left behind, they get a, a slash through their name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about the tattoos, but yeah, I don't uh, think I want a tattoo on my ankle either. <laughs> of all places to get a tattoo. Ah, oh, but this sounds like something. We we really could get this done and have a hell of a time. Well, that we have be a fun. whole year to plan it. I think we should get this started. Josh's 50th birthday spring break edition. Heck you yeah. <laughs> Here's a listener that says, no significant others. What, you guys don't want to hang out with Jose Canseco? No, no <gasps> significant other. Well, he's an you. ex. Thank you. Yeah, he's an ex. He doesn't count. You know what happens when, when you get folks together like this for a trip? Sometimes there's fights because we're not accustomed. <laughs> we're not a, I mean, of course, we spend plenty of time together here at the radio station, but it's... Once you shack up with someone in the same house for a number of days, there can be static. Who's most apt to fight? Hmm. Well, I mean, Ashley, you're fiery. Yes. Um, Who's going to fight Ashley? Nick's fiery. I think we'd... We're too similar. Yeah, we're... (laughs) I don't think the two of you would fight necessarily. You know, because, like, say, the first morning, someone says, you know, someone's mad at Ashley for, you know, I don't know, pooing on the bathroom floor or something because she had too much always, to drink. It's always Ashley pooing, always on, the pooing on the bathroom floor. <laughs> and it's on purpose. Of course yeah. she doesn't. She just did it once. Why is it suddenly always? <laughs> but I think, I don't think, one of you might be really mad at Ashley for that where I would, because uh, we're kind of similar, I would say, you know, it happens. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. I think I would, anything that you would do, Nick, I'd be like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're kinda, I, yeah I wasn't suggesting the two of you would fight. I'm suggesting one or both of you would be involved in whatever it was. Ah. So I'm trying to figure out who it would be. I don't know. Maybe, um, 
both of you against Dana? We'd be yeah. yelling at Dana because he he brought like a, his Mario Kart game or something. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Dana? No, we can't go to the strip club. I'm playing Mario. <laughs> No phone calls or text messages to significant others either while oh. we're there. <laughs> Some people Locked said we down. shouldn't even bring cell phones. I was just going to say, oh, going back to our rough. discussion earlier, right? No phones, so you can't have Dude. videos. Oh, oh no. I would get left behind. Yeah. It's like friggin'. <laughs> suddenly it's like Gilligan's Island. Yeah, yeah. I like that. No communication with the outside <laughs> world. That would be so <laughs> fun. We all get like dollar pagers or something. Yeah. Oh, dude, Dana couldn't <laughs> handle it. There's no way Dana could no, handle that. I'd, 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 yeah, I'd be the first one. I'd be flying home immediately. And some of you couldn't handle no communication with a significant other. You couldn't handle it. Mm. You think? Yeah. Oh, really? Like mm-hmm. who? I think I could. Like Wapple. I wouldn't enjoy I I it very You're much. You're so whipped you can't see straight. You telling no, me you not. could go five, six days without contacting your lady? Oh, yeah. Hell no. Definitely. We actually busted a dude once up at the fish house uh, trip. Telling him. We tried to make it like two days. Two days. Can't text the girlfriend. He couldn't handle it. We busted him. Sitting up in the top bunk of the fish house inside his sleeping bag, fingering <laughs> his cell phone. <laughs> was, it a, was it a new girlfriend? Yeah. Uh, there okay. you go. Yeah. Oh, that's what, hard. Was it because he was afraid she was going to forget about him and step out, maybe? Mm, no, I don't Nothing think. Nothing like that? No, I, mean, they were, I think they were new enough to where he didn't have those kinds of worries Wasn't yet. too worried about he that just, yet? He just was the, the, the kind of guy that has to, you know, be connected at the hip. He was new to the whole thing, so. All right. Like Janelle said, we got a whole year to plan something like this. And in, just in case the sales department or our program director is listening, no, we're not going to broadcast at all. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see that the sales department's already on the phone with Sun Country or something, <laughs> or the program director's trying to get us to put on some live shows? No, no, spring break means spring break. We're not contacting this place at all. <laughs> You cool with that rule, Josh? Yeah, well, yeah. we're getting matching tattoos. We can't go on the air. Yeah. No right. work. No work. Care 11's Janelle Klein. This is the 93X half assed Warning Show. We're pulling the plug shortly. We're pulling the plug on this operation. You get the hell out of here. Well, I was doing we'll, we'll, sit-ups during that entire commercial break. I want to get ready for our trip. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Get that beach bod going. One year. Yeah. We've been talking about the half-assed morning show spring break 2025. <laughs> We're just in the process of working this out, planning this trip for this time next year. We were talking earlier. Janelle's the only one out of the six of us who's gone on a legit spring break from back in her high school college days. None of the rest of us ever were able to go that route. So we're planning this uh, half ass Morning Show Spring Break 2025. Janelle's going to be our tour guide because she's been to all these different places, wonderful places. She thought maybe we'd go to Florida. Again, this is all the beginning stages. Uh, being the oldest, I, I thought I'd make a couple of rules. No significant others. I don't like <laughs> I don't like the people that, that you folks date. <laughs> Okay, uh, what was the other rule? We were wearing thongs yep. on the beach. <laughs> thongs. No uh, phones. We, 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 oh, no phones allowed. No contact with the outside world. And uh, we do believe in leaving a man behind. <laughs> we do believe if the six of us are at the bar, Janelle falls off the bar stool, breaks her ankle, we're leaving her there. Too bad. Normally we would, uh, oh God, let's make, we never leave a man. On this trip, we're leaving someone behind. If they go down. I got some text messages on uh, half Ass Morning Show Spring Break 2025. Some folks are trying to start trouble. Uh, texter <laughs> says, uh, your spring break trip sounds like the movie The Hangover with the always hilarious Ken Jong. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst movie characters ever. Would you not? Uh, I, uh, Josh and I agreed on this years ago. Ken Jong's character from The Hangover almost completely ruined the movie. It's too bad because... It seems like he's such a real a good guy in real life, but yeah, that was that was a little tough. Yeah. Even though he was not in the movie much, it was so bad it almost ruined the movie. <laughs> it was okay at first, and then it just it was that bit was too much. Now back to our rule of no contact with the outside world, no texting and calling our girlfriends and boyfriends and whatnot while we're down there. I thought Wapple would have the most trouble with that because he's whipped. But I got a text from someone that makes a good point. They said, you know, Wampo went 25 years without talking to a girl. He could go five days. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know how to survive. 
And listen to this spring break trip. You're not the only one who's gone out on spring break, Janelle. Mm -hmm. One of our listeners went to Daytona Beach in 1986. Boy, you think Daytona Beach is lawless now. Oh, yeah. I'll bet it was incredible back then. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what it was like in 1980s? Did you you went to Daytona on one of your spring breaks? I don't think uh, it was ever Daytona. Not Daytona. No, uh, I think Miami and Fort Myers. If we did Daytona, I'd want to see the racetrack. That'd be kind of yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We could get totally out there and take a look. Where were the cutest dudes from when you were on your spring break? Mm. We like, oh, the Michigan dudes <laughs> were so cute. <laughs> oh, those dudes were from Massachusetts. <laughs> or did you hope you'd run into people from other countries? You know, kind of exotic. Men yeah, I don't around. remember anyone from other countries. It was other colleges, so I don't know. It would, you know, depend on when your spring break lined up with other schools. Right. And and it was exactly like Marcus Polino was saying this morning. It's like two hundred dollars uh, all all you can drink and eat. I mean, yeah. it was just it's sick. Cheap as hell. It's disgusting. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same now. I bet it's cr- crazy expensive. Yeah, at this I don't point. know. It's like grand. You just wipe out a tombstone pizza when you wake up, yeah. and then just go out drinking. Just go again. And you're you're only out fifteen dollars yeah. by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Where there was you went to Wisconsin. Yeah. Did you guys out party everybody? Because I know Wisconsin people love to masturbate to that uh, <laughs> idea. Oh my Did, god. Uh, <laughs> did you, uh, did uh, Wisconsin folks drink all the there's, beer? There's a lot of drinking. Yeah. I'll bet. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a rule. No masturbation on the trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're sharing a house. I, I agree. I'm with you. We're I'm sharing not. a house. No masturbation on the trip. If you want to go, like, down the street, find a public bathroom, whatever you want to do, that's fine, but not in the house. <laughs> yeah. Like Ashley said, you should masturbate in a public bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Where other people are going to be using it, possibly even children. <laughs> Better than the house. <laughs> no masturbation, Cubby says. As the second oldest, you've earned the right to make that rule. Yeah, I think no one should be able to do that. Uh, on this trip, I'm not going. <laughs> you'll be fine. But l- listen to this now. I love hearing stories of the old days. You know, you young people are going to say, what? What are you even talking about? I don't care. Dude went on a spring break in Daytona, 1900. Uh, 86. MTV was there, he says, but he didn't get near their setup. But he did see a concert. Because earlier I was saying, it always seemed to me like he went on spring break and there was always some mid-major band or rap artist there to, you know, play their one or two hits. And then (laughs) this dude got to see in concert, Josh, Starship. Oh, really? Sweet. And Mr. Mister. Hey, that, that wouldn't be a bad show to 86 go to. 86 Spring Break, Starship, and Mr. Mister. Yeah, that's perfect. Kyrie lays upon the road that I must travel. Starship gets hell that they don't deserve, I think. That's a great story. Well, we'll work on it, Janelle. I think we should. You're a pro at traveling. You'll have no problems we could say you got 20 minutes to get ready and you'd probably be ready i'd be all set to go yeah the rest of us are amateurs so you'll have to show us around think how fun this would be if we actually did it how many of us would make it back (laughs) i think we'd all be back oh yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i think so we'd have material for months oh we would that's a good point that's a good point here's my prediction if we went on half-assed morning show spring break 2025 (laughs) just the six of us uh, some people are texting in, and you're bringing Randy Shaver. I don't know. We'll ask him right now. Uh, you know, him, he might go now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that would yeah. Retired Randy is a different guy. Yeah. Or, almost Brad. retired Randy, I should say. Now nah, we'll leave Brad. Brad. <laughs> my, for now, it's just the six of us. But here's my prediction. If we do Half-Ass Morning Show Spring Break 2025, you'll never hear us on the air together after you won't. <laughs> you think that it would be that bad? It would be the end of the show. No. It would be the end of the show. <laughs> Can you imagine? So uh, Wapple, Dana, and Ashley, they share a studio usually. All of a sudden, they're in their own studios. <laughs> You've heard that about other morning shows where they just can't be anywhere near each oh, other. Yeah. Yeah. Once the mics are off, they don't talk, nothing. It's so weird it's to me. It's more common than you think, too. You would never hear another episode of the show. That would be the end. Wait, that can happen? Dana, you need your own studio. (laughs) (laughs) He's got his own right now. We wouldn't blame you, Janelle. We wouldn't blame anybody. See, I see this being a bonding experience where we become even better friends. I don't know, first and foremost, how that's possible to become better friends. But Ah. I could see that for sure. 
you never know. Making Again, memories. We'll together. have to find making memories. Yeah, yes. uh, that, that would be live, so laugh, cute. Laugh, love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a guy friend, you know, who talks like that. Does he mean it or is he joking around? No, he means it. He means it. <laughs> what are you guys doing this weekend? We'll say, uh, are we hanging out at the Legion? You want to go up north? Oh, I don't know. We'll we'll get back to you on that. Yeah, give me a call. I want to go up north. Let, let's let's go make some memories. I like uh-huh. to talk that way with friends. See, it's a joke. I got a guy friend. He talks like he's serious. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Let's make some memories tonight. <laughs> oh, God. Let's, let's bond. <laughs> punch him in the mouth. <laughs> and we got to go. Thank you, Janelle. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you stopping by, as always. Love being here. We'd like to send our thoughts to more kids than brain cells, Jesus. Got some bad news this morning. We learned he lost his grandpa today, and we were mm. sorry to hear that. Hope you're doing as best as possible. Scrolling through Facebook on the can, Jesus. Text in a shout-out to his best bro, Red Eye Jesus. Happy birthday to you. And he said that uh, he hopes you're ready to get your ass kicked at bowling tonight. On his birthday? That's not cool. <laughs> Happy birthday to Long Arm Jesus, Liquid Steel Jesus, and the beautiful Milf Jesus from Got Milf Jesus. Then before we go, if you have your phone handy and you'd like loud rock shows, loud rock, text leader leader to uh, L E A D E R leader to the Luther Bloomington Kia text line 651-989-9393. You can win tickets to Corn October 27th at the X furnished by Live Nation. Tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m., but again, you can win them now. Best of luck. We've got another concert announcement. It's 21 Pilots. They'll be coming to Target Center October 12th, and tickets will be going on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. The 93X and FM Morning Show. 90. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now.